the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Pray, O oh God, that this teaching tonight will cause havoc in the kingdom of darkness. Let this teaching tonight cause havoc in the kingdom of darkness. Let tonight's teaching open the eyes of your people and grant us grace. For upon Mount Zion you have said, There shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated if you can. I want you to be very sensitive tonight. If anyone is under the anointing close to you, just help them. Anyone being delivered close to you, just help them. Just assist the ushers. Let our spirits be open. Shabalakoto mm. Sikata. The mystery of deliverance, part three. Shalabakato Sibriati Shkalabando Sabriti. I struggle with the things that I'm going to be teaching you tonight because um, in fact I really had to pray for grace from God so that we will be attentive to the things that will be taught and I pray by the Spirit that God will grant us the eyes that see and the ears that hear in the name of Jesus Christ second corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11 we'll start from there tonight we're in part three please listen if you're a man of god here let your heart be open because when you understand what i'm about to teach you will set so many people free whether you are the coordinator of a little fellowship a little group a church an outreach doesn't matter what the body of Christ is yet to be aware of how ignorant we are about the subject of the realm of the spirit and the operations of darkness. In our arrogance, we will claim that we know enough. In our arrogance, we will claim that there's nothing to be known. And even those who are in what we call the deliverance ministry, um, there's not very much mm. I saw a vision of so many angels while I was driving coming here and I knew that tonight when you see angels ascending and descending then God is about to speak that's what Jacob saw he saw a ladder that connected earth and heaven and at the top of it God was speaking so what were the angels doing when God was speaking they were going up and down making sure that what he says does not fall to the ground some of you this is the missing key to your ministry some of you this is the missing link to the anointing you see it in dreams some of you this teaching tonight will answer a lot of questions you will know that this is it I found it I truly pray for you that God will open your eyes lest Satan should get a what say advantage so Satan can have an advantage over a man 
what is the advantage that satan can have over men our being ignorant of his devices is an advantage to satan this is the bible we're starting tonight that the bible says whoever by any means is ignorant of the operation of darkness and how satan operates to afflict the saints you have given satan no matter who you are you have given him an advantage he said lest satan should get an advantage over us for we are not ignorant of his devices his methodology his system of operation that means if we for any reason become careless about meticulously studying the operation of satan and the way he can afflict and even subjugate the saints the bible says the apostle speaking that it can become an advantage think how many families think how many churches brothers and sisters think how many well-meaning pastors think how many people who call upon the name of the lord day and night have given satan an advantage not by inviting him directly by allowing the deception that paying attention to the operation of satan is not spirituality and we have given him an advantage We have not been able to interpret the happenings in our lives and we have not understood these things and so we continue to try we continue to fight a fight that is in ignorance with defeat being imminent but then the bible says lest satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant we are not ignorant that's the key to closing the door we are not ignorant we are not ignorant paul said i am not ignorant but i have also taught you so we that means there are some people who are ignorant we are not ignorant of his devices last week we began to teach on deliverance as a system for experientially establishing the victory and authority of christ over satan over demons and over the powers of darkness concerning our lives i did teach us last week that there are three levels of satanic influences i'm just doing a quick recap for the sake of those who are not here that the first is called deception and that all men can be deceived including the saints it is possible deception we explored that and then the next level is manipulation and control and i told us that this is the realm of the mind where satan can take advantage of your understanding of your thinking and manipulate your understanding and the third we saw that it was um, complete influence and control that's what we call possession where an individual is completely under the influence of satan such as the case of the madman in gadara in mark chapter 5 and then we explain a number of things the teachings are available you can get them and i told us that the greatest strength of satan is the flesh the flesh the flesh so i'll talk a little bit about the flesh and then we'll share something um i struggle to do my best to see that we exhaust this teaching tonight but i i do not know there is so much to say as i was just preparing and studying i was wondering what part do i include and what part do i not include this subject is so broad you can have even part one to thirty and not repeat anything there is so much that the saints do not know so we'll see how god will help us tonight why are we teaching this number one it is a revelation of the mercy and the love of god to us to grant us access to this truth number two because the season has come for us to possess our possessions and according to obadiah 1 17 it says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of jacob shall possess their possessions are we together so let's look at the flesh what exactly is the flesh saying that it is one of the greatest weapons of satan i'll touch on it um, 
very briefly and then I want to teach us something very powerful. Romans chapter 17 and verse chapter 7 and verse 18. Romans 7 and verse 18. I'd like you to read with me. One, two, read. For I know that in me, that is my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Who is speaking? Who is speaking? This is not a baby Christian speaking. This is not someone who just got born again yesterday. This is not one student of some rabbi. This is one who has been granted access. He's, he's, he's opening the tragedy of the flesh and the, the imminent doom that befalls anyone who chooses to walk in this realm that the Bible calls the flesh. What is the flesh? It says, for I know that in me, he's not just talking about his body necessarily. That is my flesh dwelleth what? no good thing if you fail an exam and you get 37 you pass some you just didn't pass enough but if you get zero there's no possibility the bible says the flesh there is no good thing not some no good thing that means if you dwell in the realm of the flesh you have given satan the biggest advantage over your life it doesn't matter what else you do you have submitted yourself for defeat what is the flesh write this down the flesh is defined as a nature of living thinking and acting that is against the ways of God the flesh a nature of living thinking and acting that is against the ways of God so it affects your life it affects your mind it affects your body every part of you are we together the flesh every time the bible talks of the flesh or the old man has different expressions the the understanding is twofold this is not my major discussion tonight but i want to at least do justice there the the first dimension is what the bible calls the sin nature the man who is not regenerate the bible no matter how innocent you are in fact here's how the prophet puts it he said in iniquity did my mother conceive me so he didn't have to do anything directly the very nature of the fallen man one who has not encountered the life the zoe life of god the bible defines that that person born and living in the flesh so the sin nature are we together now the remedy for that is not counseling the remedy for that is the deliverance that we call salvation i hope you know salvation is deliverance yes salvation there is the special deliverance to remedy that nature you can't correct it it's not a nature that you correct it's not a nature that you renew it has to be taken away completely through the substitutionary work of jesus christ only a genuine encounter with the son of god the bible says and this is the record remember that god hath given us what eternal life so way and it says this life is in his son it says so that whosoever has the son has that life it says whoever does not have the son doesn't have that life so there is no assumption as to whether that nature is in you or not if you have not encountered the son no matter how you convince yourself zoe is not in you you may have money you may have education you may feel good about yourself but the nature the very nature just because you feel good about yourself doesn't mean you are free 
listen listen we're addressing something that is spiritual in context just because you feel you have never done anything wrong in your life doesn't mean you are free are we together now many times our minds and our consciences will deceive us into thinking because we look so far and think we are innocent and then we believe that the innocence brought the nature by itself now there is no assumption about that nature it is taken away only by the blood of the eternal covenant the blood of jesus christ himself and this life is in his son so that whosoever has the son has eternal life if you are not born again that life is not in you period if you are not born again that nature is still at work in you that is the chiefest authorization of satan greater than even any covenant that you have willfully brought yourself under the government of satan that's why i said i set before you the choice is yours life and death i set before you blessing and cursing i can only advise you i can't force you choose life that you may live one of the ways you choose life is to say lord i i i submit to your government i come willingly out of the government and the hold of satan is deliverance the name of that deliverance is salvation as free and cheap as it is you must participate in it otherwise it will not work are you getting what i'm saying now so the sin nature but number two the second dimension of the flesh and and that is that is the one that i think aff affects us because i know that a greater number of us here by the grace of god are born again we've given our life to christ and so based on the authority of the word we know that that nature is gone but the second the second dimension of what the bible calls the flesh is a stronghold write it down a stronghold a stronghold a stronghold in our minds that is fortified by the presence of demon spirits a stronghold this is flesh now the bible is talking about a stronghold in our minds that is fortified listen carefully fortified by the presence of demon spirits are we together motivated by self-centeredness vainglory and self-exaltation a stronghold in our minds fortified by the presence of demon spirits that is motivated by self-centeredness write it down self-centeredness vain glory vain glory and then number three self-exaltation that's what the bible calls the flesh so when the bible speaks of the flesh within the context of a believer he's talking of a stronghold that is present not in your spirit a stronghold that is present within your mind within the solical realm are we together now that is fortified the fact that it is not can you see that even in your mind demons are still there follow me you will be blessed tonight motivated by self-centeredness remember my teaching christ-centeredness motivated by self-centeredness motivated by vain glory motivated by self-exaltation this the bible says that nature that nature there is no good thing in that nature that means whoever entertains that nature to control and govern your life the result is already predictable there is no good thing no matter how much deliverance gallons and gallons of anointing oil no matter how much prayer and fasting no matter what you do if this nature is allowed unattended to then paul already gives you your faith are you seeing the reason why many deliverance ministries for instance it looks like it's an endless struggle of attempting to do something you can pray dry you can pray all kinds you can do all kinds and and find out 
that in the midst of it it looks like forever you are casting spirits it looks like forever you are casting spirits it's like a journey of consistently casting spirits this is it and satan knows satan does not mind entertaining you during your deliverance session for as long as he finds out that this is unattended to you can do every other thing you want to do he will be glad to be represented and flatter you into thinking you are so anointed whereas the major issue has not been dealt with a stronghold a stronghold and satan has taken advantage of the church listen very carefully because we have been taught that a believer cannot be possessed that is true but possession is not the only way spirits participate in your life I'm going to be showing you now so we mean that just because a believer is not possessed every other thing that happens is just his thinking that is not working well uh, leave Satan out and we have allowed Satan to mess up our our understanding the construction of our beliefs and you find out that although you know the Zoe life is in your spirit how come in the soul realm you are so helpless to him to the point that it even looks like your salvation is a lie are you ready to follow me on this journey tonight the flesh the Bible gives us let me just tidy it up so that we we'll leave this and and just go very quickly the Bible tells us what to do with the flesh Galatians chapter 5 we we'll read 15 to 17 then we'll jump to Colossians chapter 3 1 and 2 16 and 7 Galatians chapter 5 16 and 17 16 let's start from 16 Galatians 5 16 this I say then the same Paul is speaking what is the remedy for the flesh walk ye it didn't say receive the spirit walk ye in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh he's telling you this remedy you are not just going to say flesh I'm, I'm tired of you no he's saying you must find a way whatever this is walk ye in the spirit and then you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh 17 he says for the flesh lusted against the spirit notice what is the flesh attacking talk to me what is the flesh attacking that the flesh we look for everything the spirit of god has created for you to do and that's what it fights the assignment of the flesh is to cause you to consistently violate the ways of the spirit and the spirit also that means when you are spirit controlled you will find yourself fighting the attributes of the flesh and the bible said these two these two are contrary the one to another so that ye cannot do the things that ye will. Let me explain to you what this means. In any case, you are not just allowed to do what you want. There has to be one of them. So you are under conflict. Today you are this, tomorrow you are that. And Paul is saying, let me explain to you that these vacillations is as a result of a war. The war is an attempt by the flesh or the spirit to gain dominance over your life. That you feel so prayerful today and tomorrow you just sit down and say to hell with this jesus self i'm not even sure paul is saying it's not your fault i'm explaining to you at the point you were saying to hell you are still not on your own are we together now another force another agency you are only executing what that agency has planted within you mm. the flesh People talk so much about the power of God. They talk so much about freedom, yet they never talk about the flesh. And so Satan doesn't mind our fasting. Satan doesn't mind our prayer because he knows that that stronghold is there. And what a joy to Satan when he finds out that you advise yourself that just because I am in Christ, automatically, the only thing that is left is just for me to keep receiving scripture. And as I receive scripture, I will change automatically. It looks very spiritual, but I will be showing you it's a dimension of deception. Because many of us have been doing it obediently and it has not been working. As always, we have been trained to keep quiet and, and, and not to be honest enough. So we make it look like I'm, I'm okay, everything is fine. No, you are not fine. Colossians chapter 3 
verse 1 and 2 and then we'll go to 1 and 2 then 16 and 17 look at this Paul is now buttressing on what he means by walking in the spirit remember he already told us that when you walk in the spirit you can conquer the flesh one of the ways you walk in the spirit is what read with me one to read if ye then be risen with Christ that means if it is true that you claim that you are risen with Christ he says seek those things which are where above seek those things which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of the father verse 2 set your mind set your affection now he uses something very interesting your affection your affinity your desire your longing set it like you set a thermometer set it to make sure that it is focused on the things above and not on the things that are of the earth are we together and then verse 16 says let the word of christ dwell in you richly now notice he says richly in all wisdom that's a very serious part we neglect it's not just enough for the word of god to dwell in you in terms of verses just he said no wisdom it should be constructed in a way that profits you the word of christ can dwell in you in a way that you are just accumulating scripture but it's not profiting you it says there must be a construction of the word of god in such a way and a manner that that word is done in wisdom then teaching and admonishing one another in psalms spiritual songs singing with grace in your heart from the lord last verse 17 and then we are done now watch this and whatsoever ye do in word or deed do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ he's teaching us the various strategies that can help you to walk in the spirit one of it he says set your affections number two do all you do in the name as touching the government and the office that you represent walk in the consciousness of the fact that you are under an authority he's teaching here of the various ways that you can set your mind believers hear me let me tell you sincerely no matter how much prayer and how much fasting and how much casting of a demon that you cast out of someone if that person has made up his mind to be carnal and fleshly and not set your mind on spiritual things i hate to be a bearer of bad news but you only succeeded in wasting your time i give you a guarantee satan has infinite ways of returning back to that person the bible tells us when a spirit leaves a man it doesn't go and say okay i've even satan left jesus for a while he came back again to find out jesus have you been discouraged so far i left you when you were about to start ministry if satan left jesus for a while whatever makes you think that just because he left you five years ago he has gone and said okay serve god with all <clears throat> he's waiting for you at the corner of discouragement he's waiting for you where your money finishes he's waiting for you where you have a bad news or where you lose a loved one here he comes again because he knows that these things have a way of seeming to bring us down from that that echelon of spirituality it now brings us down and satan comes the bible says walk ye in the spirit i know you don't like what i'm teaching tonight but it's a powerful formula as simple as it is it's a powerful formula the flesh that stronghold the mistake that many people are now trying to make you see in correcting look at this come there is a difference between transformation happens in the realm of the mind but transformation is spiritual it's a miracle let's not reduce transformation to just the realm of scientology where we say put formula a add b to it no 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 principles are not just scientific formulas principles are spiritual laws that are backed up with the very power and presence of god get this please because 
when you study online and go around you find out that um sometimes if you are not careful you can just sit down and all you are doing is searching for laws at random just because something is a law and it works you just carry it and throw it in your mind and convince yourself that just because you put in an information that looks superior to what you already know automatically you just go no laws on their own don't drive spirits transformation is a powerful miracle it's another kind of deliverance the first dimension of transformation is not receiving the word the first dimension is the spirit entities that guard that stronghold must be taken away that deliverance must happen to you you can be a pastor prophet apostle bishop whatever you can be and flatter yourself that because of the 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 physical paraphernalia that is around your ministry you are free no you will need that deliverance you can pray in tongues non-stop every day for many years and that stronghold is just quietly watching you you reign you reign hello you reign you reign about deliverance now there are a number of things I want to teach you about deliverance let's talk about demons Let's talk a little bit i have to if i don't talk about demons um i'm looking at my course content here can we talk a little about demons matthew chapter 13 verse 24 to 30. let's go to the parable of jesus i want us to study a bit on on demons look at this another parable look up please he put forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven that means the operation of the kingdom of heaven is likened to this a man which sowed good seed everybody say a man everybody say seed one more time say a man say seed he sowed good seed the fact that the bible specified good seed already is a message are we together remember my message during the prayer and fasting 25 but while men slept while men did what his enemy came also having a seed his enemy didn't come with a knife his enemy didn't come with a gun his enemy watched what he sowed and came with his own too watch this and the bible says he came and sowed tears among the wheat and did what and went his way he represented his presence with the seed are we together now he went away when he dropped that seed there he didn't need to stay there again because he knew that the seed was a replica of himself but when the blade was sprung up so that which was a seed now became something else and brought forth fruit then appeared tears also so the servants of the household that came and said unto him sir did did not thou sow good seed in thy field in other words ah, didn't you get born again where did this come from are you not a pastor's child are you not a a, a a prophet's daughter are you not is it not you that was baptized yesterday where did this come from from whence then had it tears 28 
and he said an enemy has done this and then his servant told him will thou that we gather them up and then he says allow it our that's that's what 29 and 30 says lest while we gather up the tears we root up the wheat in them and then verse 30 let them both grow together until harvest in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers gather first the tears that means something will happen in the time of harvest that will show the difference but as it is now you can't see it and if in an attempt watch this if you understand this mystery you will know why you can be doing many things and god will not talk to you about it it doesn't mean that he doesn't see it is because if he wants to circumcise you at that level it will affect your growth process so bad so he will be patient with you to just grow you can be an arrogant man and God will never say anything about your arrogance. So you will think that you are all right just because he's not talking about it. A day will come as you keep walking with him. When he sees that you are now mature to undergo that level of spiritual circumcision, he will take you back to the subject of arrogance. And you will be surprised that you are in that level of height and now God is dealing with the issue of arrogance. The seed. The seed. This, this demon spirits that we're talking about, we have to understand them. You hear people say demons everywhere. Many of you here in Koinonia and around, you've seen demons come out of people. You've seen their violence. You've seen their aggression. Sometimes you hear people speak, you know, another spirit. Many of you watch TV around or go for meetings. Where you, who are they? Where, where do they come from? Genesis chapter 3. Let's see how we can look at it. Oh, Jesus. Is God blessing us already? Genesis chapter 3. Give us verse 15. Genesis chapter 3. Let me just touch on it. And that God will grant us grace. Now, by way of introduction to this, I hope you know that Paul the Apostle, Paul the Apostle did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that when the bible says darkness is a combination of many things i hope you know that when the bible says darkness and it says spirits dark spirits is not just one a consummation of just a group of demons it is the summation of every spirit entity and every kind of spiritual organogram that is antagonistic to the ways of god because I'll, as i'll be showing you there are many there are many this is the Lord now speaking with the woman after their fall. I'm just saving time. That's why I said we should go to verse 15. If you're with me, say amen. And I will put enmity. Who is speaking here? God. Between thee and the woman. Between Satan and the woman. God is speaking to them both now. I will put enmity between you, Satan, and the woman. He would have stopped there and then we'll understand. But then he says, I will also put enmity between what? Thy seed and her seed. So that the person he's talking to, her seed. Are you getting what I'm saying now? He's talking to Satan as one who has seed. The capacity to multiply himself and his agenda. Hi. Hey and he looks at the woman you don't talk to a woman about seed because you know from biology that women don't have seed they receive seed so the thing confused satan god why are you now talking about her seed where is it going to come from that's why the moment cain came satan believed that cain was that seed and tried to attack him from that day till moses till everybody till john the baptist once satan sees a male that a woman is giving birth to he starts pursuing them because he suspects that that may be the seed are you getting the point now between your seed and her seed now questions we have seen the seed of the woman we are part of that seed correct where is the seed of satan because the bible lets us know very clearly god himself speaking that as the woman is multiplying her own seed this spirit entity is multiplying his own seed too are we together genesis chapter 6 
Genesis chapter 6 and it came to pass I'm fast forwarding now it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the surface of the earth listen carefully it says and daughters were born unto them what happened verse 2 that the sons of God the Hebrew word there is benign Elohim it's not just sons of God like it was an error in translation it's not like sons of God like believers no are we together like like progenitors those who were part of his creation these were a class of angels that this class of angels came and saw the daughters of men do you know who these angels were these angels were not just the exalted angels because i hope you know that by the time the angels that fought with lucifer fell from heaven the ones that came down with him adam was not there adam's story and genesis one was not there they had fallen in a particular dispensation are you getting what i'm saying now mm. so by the time god is creating adam or recreating the earth and making adam there are already inhabitants in the earth satan alongside the myriads of fallen angels are you getting what i'm saying now mm. and because spirits don't die in the context of cessation of life i will tell you what the death of a spirit is I, I i told you i was going to tell you but spirits don't die in the context of ceasing from breathing and ceasing from movement the moment adam came to start another race these spirits were looking for a way to find expression are we together now it's a very serious thing and the bible says that while they were voyaging around the earth all of a sudden they saw the daughters of men that they were fair to look upon it's a scriptural way of saying they were very beautiful are we together that means those angels had feelings hello it's not all the classes of angels that you know theologically there are all kinds of arguments whether angels have the, uh, the ability to reproduce or not and we, we see it here that the angels saw the daughter of men the daughters of men and they took them wives that means they could marry they came down and saw beautiful ladies like you looking at me now and the angels chose they advised themselves he said look let's marry these women verse 3 and the Lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for seeing that his flesh is this shall be 120 verse 4 there were what now watch this the Bible just tells us that a come darling an angel are we together now a fallen angel benign Elohim all of a sudden sees human people pure humans and the Bible says took them to wives and all of a sudden we now see the manifestation of a species that the Bible calls them what I'm trying to trace the origin of demons for you that giants until this time there were no demons on earth there were fallen angels there were other dark spirits that had been in other civilizations but not demons these giants were in the earth the bible says that when the sons of god came into the daughters of men you know what that means and they bear what children that means that the seed those fallen angels had seed within them and that their seeds got these women pregnant and they gave birth to these giants who were mighty men of old men of renown are you following my story now so we traced that these women were minding their business all of a sudden these beings come that there is a possibility ah goodness so spirits can get physical women pregnant so we see that there's no argument there are we together this information is useful we need it because that's how jesus came into the world are we together now listen carefully jesus came into the world how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man joseph has not finished paying my dowry don't embarrass me and he said no a spirit is coming from heaven i will show you this is the mystery ah goodness i'm already excited 
let me just take it easy so these spirits came and all of a sudden when the women gave birth to children the children started growing unusually they had features that were superhuman it was clear that these spirits were not pure humans the seed of lucifer in those children started causing them the bible says god saw that the wickedness of man this spirit started introducing attributes upon the earth men were not that wicked all of a sudden there was a fabrication of different levels of wickedness and then the people in the earth ah, who are these beings that can be so wicked that means a normal man has a maximum level to which his heart can conceive evil if evil goes beyond that level something else is responsible for that level of heartlessness follow me because as i taught you this seed is still on earth today are we together the bible says that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually this was not the case now man had become so depraved the bible says and it repented the lord that he had made the man in the earth and it grieved his heart now watch this thank you darling did you know the lord said i will destroy man whom i have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repented me that i have made them just stop there god is regretting these spirits have found their way back into this adamic civilization they were there casted now with the ability to reproduce they found a way of creating continuity for themselves because remember the law of territory if you don't have a body these angels these spirits because they are not demons it is demons that don't have bodies angels have bodies that's why they could come to even meet angels can translate themselves into physical bodies is that true remember the angels that came to abraham they didn't come as ghosts flying they were human beings this was what caused the flood of noah are you getting what i'm saying now the flood of noah was a system of judgment that god needed to annihilate that entire race the question is the giants let me use you again the giant children that were born by these angels and this when the flood happened because spirits don't die in terms of cessation of living the bodies now died and the spirits are you getting the point now the spirits of all those race the name of those giants as you know theologically speaking is called the nephilims are we together now this disembodied spirit because every time a spirit is not in a body what happens it becomes restless these spirits they can't go to heaven they can't go to hell and they float within the circumference of earth and the second heavens and that is the reason why these spirits today are those we call demons listen carefully the demon spirits that you call are the spirits of these nephilims the sons before demons came there was already darkness listen carefully before demons came they were already fallen angels the fallen angels and the daughters of men produce what we call demons disembodied spirits now watch this look up i want to prove a few things for you i, I hope that you are getting what are you get are we are we still together let me just know that we're together do you know that fallen angels cannot possess men there is no record in scripture from genesis to revelation where a spirit was inside a man are we together now and then they ask who are you and he says um i'm angel so 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 and so no no it may look like it is the spirit but those i will tell you what their office is because those fallen angels are still working today but they are not the ones inside men are we together those disembodied spirits are the ones who move and i hope you know that the disembodied spirits that fell are by far more than the number of human beings on earth 
That's why 10,000 of them will not mind finding accommodation in one man. There is a desperate need for accommodation among those demon spirits till today. Look at, look at how they cry when you want to cast them out. That means they don't... <laughs> Listen, are you seeing the extreme violence? Now, please don't feel bad. Many of you have been delivered. Many of you will be delivered this night. But listen, notice that you will see a kind, quiet person, brother or sister. And all of a sudden, when those spirits are provoked by the power of God, it will take five people to suddenly hold one person. You see the way people are rolling on the floor. There is no power. You try rolling like that by yourself and see what happens. Another entity, this disembodied spirit, to the point that when Jesus was about to cast them, they begged him. They said, Jesus, you know our condition. You are not in ignorance as to what is happening to us. Where do you? Because they know it's hard to find a body that can allow you to be comfortable. That's why when they find it, they go straight to the realm of your mind and create a system that makes sure even if they evict them, they can still come back. Please understand what I'm teaching you and you will be free. You will experience victory and you will possess your possession. Demon spirits. They are everywhere today. As I'm talking now, there are demon spirits around, hoping and waiting, where will I get accommodation now? Are we together now? Where will I get accommodation now? This is what it means for spirits to die. When they say demon spirit should die, is the restlessness that is created by exiting it from a mortal body. It is an intense state of torture. No spirit, no spirit is like putting you inside water and dropping you there. That's exactly what you do. When That's why they cry and they beg. They make sure they don't leave. They negotiate all kinds of things. Jesus, have you come to cast us? Shall we have a time now? Jesus said, go. Say, let's look at they drown the swine. They were so desperate for bodies, they entered pigs for a few minutes just so that they can find a place to rest. The pigs were entering water. They said, Yes, let's just be rested before you enter the water. You see why Satan hates deliverance? You may not know what it is. That is the reason why, when you cast out devils, you are in trouble because Satan will mobilize any kind of attack on your life. At on anything he knows what is happening is God helping us are we understanding something so this spirit but there are other kinds of spirit I hope you know that the fallen angels that fell with Lucifer are not the only angels that have fallen <laughs> there are many group of offenses there are others who fell so bad they are in chains now they are not even allowed to be featured in that's the level of wickedness those guys are more wicked than satan himself what they did to god we'll find out when we get to heaven that god and they they were cast down not to the earth satan was cast down and left in the earth but these spirits were taken straight to the bottomless pit and were bound there with chains because for the sake of the elect they were not left on earth what would they have done that means even satan would have been afraid of them i'm demystifying this thing to you whether it comes as occultism whether it comes as oboni there is a central system of operation it's when it comes to execution that all those variations come the foundation of all of this is this spirit finding a resting place and when this <sighs> these angels watch their children called demons move around with no bodies in intense torture and so they say let's work together we will coordinate you while you enter the people will tell you what to do and so paul said wow so there are principalities there are powers there are rulers then there are others who don't operate in the earth realm there are spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places they all coordinate themselves one one demon 
spoke on behalf of 10,000 of them. It was when Jesus asked him, who are you? He now said, we are many. Oh. Forget that you are hearing only my voice. There is a, an intelligent organogram. Brothers and sisters, if one human body can host 10,000 demons, then it's important for you to listen. One demon, one body can be so powerful. If one body can host God, why can't it host demons? That a man's body can be the temple of the living God. Let me just compose myself and get somewhere. Because if you don't understand this, what are you delivering? You see where we miss it? We just come and tell somebody there's a spirit. Oh yeah, we bend his head and just turn him around. Oh yeah, you must come out. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'll hug you after I'm done with my example. And you turn his head around and the guy just says, man, let me just quietly fall for this guy to leave me in peace. And he just falls down and you, you tell him to say thank you, Jesus. He repeats after you. You get up and you are happy. And the demon spirit says, wow what ignorance advantage advantage demon spirits can dwell in your spirit demon spirits can dwell in your mind demon spirits can dwell in your body when you tell somebody you cast a demon it just comes out you don't know where it came out from it will re you the same way it comes out from your spirit your soul and your body physically it will look the same it takes discernment to know what happened and the authority of scripture that guides you if that person you are delivering is a believer then you know certainly it must not be from his spirit because he that is joined to Christ is one spirit are we together but that does not mean this is where many of us have been surprised because for many years you believe that no these demons cannot find expression you came for koinonia to your surprise praise and worship was going on and all of a sudden you are feeling as if somebody is drawing your clothes you are saying what is happening the next thing you are sweeping the ground you are waking up after 10 minutes what is wrong and you are a pastor and you are, you are, you are a, 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 a prayer leader and your members were watching and say ha ah, oh god prayer leader what i hope that this impact we received impartation the night before this deliverance so what really entered us no you don't stigmatize people a spiritual childishness to think just because a demon was casted out that no 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 you don't do that the fact that you are being delivered is a sign that you are in mount zion it's not something that should make you ashamed the, the, that means you have gotten to a place where the light and the power of god is forcing those spirits to be uncomfortable it's a thing of joy You have to understand these demon spirits because they are everywhere there are many ways they can enter that's why they are desperate you can know that these spirits are let me tell you this those spirits have on you their characteristics you know that they are in or around your life because whatever they produce in your life is abnormal are we together a demon spirit can find expression and you can start having abnormal passion for food you can eat the food of 10 people it's called gluttony it's not a medical condition the spirit is eating through you even you you know that by myself i cannot eat this kind of food listen listen this spirit now enters you and begins to manifest an unusual passion then you marry one wife the spirit is not satisfied with one woman you now say oh let me just be careful this is my one and only wife the spirit says no way and all of a sudden you add 12 more and the spirit says more you add 12 more and the spirit says you are delaying me let's let's switch to to the point that the spirit can be patient if it doesn't find women it will make a man like a man it's not normal these are the spirits behind it listen very carefully that's what happened in the days of noah these spirits you see are not weak they are not foolish they are not stupid the moment they find a body they start manifesting their characteristic the same way when the holy spirit finds a body all of a sudden an anointing you shouldn't have i shouldn't know your name 
where did it come it's obvious that it's not me something has taken charge of my faculties and is revealing to me something that i should not know ordinary me if i stand close to you maybe if we fight you will even beat me but all of a sudden i will lift my hand and this guy is on the floor now is that me no the same way i'm supposed to give you peace ordinarily but because of the demon spirit in me when i come near you your life must scatter it's not me hear me married people this is a mistake people are coming with forces and influences they don't even know and you find uh, this is the mistake that prophets make again listen carefully especially if you're in the prophetic here because they now look and say oh your wife is a witch she's not a witch for some reason she's she's hosting a habitation of certain spirit beings that are creating an effect even her she will tell you i don't know why everybody i come near if it's their business it dies if it's everything it dies are you seeing why some of you the moment somebody comes to say i love you i want to go and see your parents the spirit in him will say am i not already there so what do you want to do now tragedies listen very carefully those spirits feed on things and they put in you desires that will continue to feed them while they remain that's why you can sit down and they will wake you in the night to carry your laptop and type something you should not watch and you are watching you hate what you are watching but the spirit is feeding on it it is the atmosphere that will keep it there your majesty your majesty that come to you in the dream world they carry the face of a man they carry the face of a woman they carry the face of an object a loved one it doesn't matter they are doing something to you all of a sudden you want to give someone a job and you say by tomorrow please come and collect the job you go to bed notice all of a sudden they have come the dream will carry different you may see yourself in primary school second it doesn't matter what form it comes they are still the ones listen to me all of a sudden they may come and molest you they may come and do whatever they want to do and you stand up in the morning to you you don't know what happened you dress very smart sir i've come to collect my employment letter and the man will say if i see you here you had the testimony of our mommy here how can you tell somebody else? this is what has made many of your helpers to leave you they will promise you send me your account and all of a sudden you go to bed and those spirits are here we don't know the bible said lest satan should take an advantage of you for we are not ignorant ignorant this is the number one cause number one cause number one cause of barrenness number one cause of impotency the jealousy of those spirits the very jealousy of those spirits with all honor to our doctors i love doctors but i'm telling you this is it can i surprise you i want to tell you something that many of you may not believe i hope and pray that you may believe it i that's why you see i struggle with tonight's teaching it is possible for a woman to carry a seed that is for both her husband and these spirits i wish i'm not the one teaching this sometimes this 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 work is very hard sometimes it's true go back to our villages and hear what our great grandparents with divination used to say sometimes they will see a child and stand and say no let me look at this child and look at this child and look at this child and say no something is wrong and this child is born 
with unusual trouble and unusual abilities usually doesn't last for too long and just dies and goes but within that 12 to 15 years the trouble that that child causes for the family what can this one is not a deliverance issue this is another seed that is not human can i tell you this don't feel bad we are praying don't feel bad this is how fibroid is formed what you call fibroid is the aberration of the intercourse between these spirits are we together now an attempt for these spirits that's why it grows in the same place where a baby should grow as a baby is growing is growing too and notice that 90 percent of the time it will kill the baby yet you say it's not alive from the womb already ask jacob and esau that from the womb the children were already there they were already fighting ask jesus and john you call them they are just fetuses whereas there was communication going on when mary met with um elizabeth the babies too met with themselves how are you how are you well now we're coming oh i will come before you make sure you do it nice they were interacting please sit down when you know these things you will appreciate the power of god and the victory of christ i know this may look like a messy teaching tonight but just allow me tidy this up and then you will walk back and now find out that nothing just happens nothing watch this these demon spirits till today until jesus comes they are searching for bodies to find expression they are in our fathers that's why our fathers behave unusually they are in our mothers that's why they behave unusually wife that's the mystery behind the stubbornness and your wise decisions of your husband he may be well-meaning notice that most of those people a time can come they are calm and understanding and peaceful and cooperative and then suddenly something comes when you are bringing someone out of a prison cell there's a sign here that you will never steal anybody's thing you will sign and say i won't do anything say oh yeah be born again I'm, I'm, i i will be a serious person i will even be serious for the first two days he will go to the farm doing well until that spirit now knows there is a stronghold are we together i will teach you this on deliverance there is already a doorway that allows it so the spirit goes on vacation as that brother is in the farm he will make another person annoy him because all these attributes of the flesh are doors with a simple anger it returns it has entered the guy doesn't know all of a sudden the guy gets up and says you hit me and beats him and kills him he's back to the prison he's wondering what am i doing on my way back to the prison the spirit has come back to his house because when a spirit leaves a man it doesn't wave at you it allows for some time the frustration of a lack of habitation will make it come back and say that womb i left let me go back and find out what is there oh there is a child there now that home i went there is joy now i need a space for myself and the moment they find expression they will have to start executing their own attributes have you not been surprised look at those who steal if they are under the influence of that demon hide anything anywhere the person will stand is like word of knowledge he will just look around and say lift that carpet you will carry the money there he doesn't know it's true i'm telling you this you know i'm not lying you hide the money anywhere one day you hide it inside the ceiling he will just stand and stand and look up the spirit is saying look up that's where it is I know I know a true story a true story of a couple I counseled some years ago they were about to get married all of a sudden from nowhere very wonderful lady who loves the Lord the lady brought a report crying that they said she was positive with HIV ah, she even me I was surprised because a lady that I know very well behaved lady I said what happened where did that one come from and all of a sudden when I was looking in the realm of the spirit god just opened my eyes and as soon as i touched that spirit something strange happened 
now I'm, I'm not saying you should go out and create trouble but something strange happened the spirit started manifesting and speaking around and he said at the point of the test it entered the doctor doctors you are my friends i'm just being thank god you are born again we just finished an outreach there are many things that if we do not know there are many people carrying reports that are not true there are many people carrying things that are not true it is this same spirit that appear what is hiv hiv is called aids abi acquired is acquired meaning it's not within you it came from somewhere acquired immunodeficiency syndrome I'm, I, I hope i'm right where do you think it came from where do you think cancer came from when you understand this you will know why all of a sudden jacob did something do you know i will be showing you jacob slept and had a dream and jacob saw where the males that pregnanted the female goats came from he was in a dream he looked above and saw that all the males in the realm of the spirit were spotted Hi. <laughs> it was not laban's males no they came from somewhere that's why it didn't matter what laban said the results were manipulated from the realm of the spirit when you are assisted from the realm of the spirit it doesn't matter what the disadvantages are there is a system to change everything this is not my discussion this night but i don't don't tempt me to have to go and show you please that this spirit interactions must be there for satan and demons to find expression no man just enters trouble like that and no man just comes out like that there must be that spirit interaction let me show you something you're tempting me for us to genesis 30 let's look at it genesis 30 25 we'll look at 25 to 43 jesus thank you pray in the spirit please while we are opening this hallelujah look at this look at this genesis 30 25 let me talk about jacob and laban now i'm establishing a point here and it came to pass when rachel was born joseph that jacob said to laban send me away that i may go to my place and my country we're reading it's a long reading let's see how fast we can go just keep just keep projecting and let's go he said give me my wives and all of that and all of that go to 28 jacob is discussing with laban now and he said appoint me thy wages and i will give thee 29 we're reading down to 40 there about and he said thou knowest that i have served thee and how thy cattle was with me 30 for it was little which thou hast before i came and it is now increased to a multitude and the lord had blessed thee who blessed thee talk to me who blessed thee the lord has we'll see how that lord did the blessing the lord had blessed thee since my coming and now well shall i provide for my own house 31 and he said what shall i give thee jacob he said don't give me anything if thou will do with this one thing i will again keep thy flock what is the one thing 32 i will pass through the flock today removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle and all the brown cattle among the sheep and the spotted and speckled among the goats and of such they shall be my hire so he's saying i will go round your ranch all the cows and the sheep that are spotted i will pick them at this point there were not many i hope you know that and then he says so shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come when it shall come for my hire you know this and that and that everyone that is not speckled or spotted he was saying that if you find it with me then take me as a thief are you getting the idea now the bible says so laban said behold i would that it might you know might be done according to your word 35 and he removed that day all the goats that were ring straight and spotted and so on and so forth and so forth go to verse 40 go to verse 40 jacob went on a journey there's uh, there's no time to prove it but you will see that jacob simply went on a journey for three days jacob returned back after three days and suddenly saw spotted calves he said no something is going on here the goats and cows and sheep were not pregnant the normal time 
that goats there because the males that got them pregnant were not part of the fold they came from somewhere the same way the bible never says jesus was pregnant for nine months no it's not on record that jesus was pregnant for nine months jacob did separate the lamb and set the faces of the flocks towards the ring stake and all you know all of this and he put his own flocks and put them you know this and that 41 and it came to pass whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive that jacob laid the rods before his eyes the eyes of the cattle in the gutters that they might conceive among the rods when we read to 43 we stop there but when the cattle were feeble he put them not in so the feebler were labans and the stronger jacobs last verse 43 then we'll go to verse 41 and the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and made servants and men servants and camels and asses now go to chapter 31 let me search it here 31 from verse 10 to 13 genesis 31 read with me one to read and it came to pass at the time that the cattle had come i just jumped from verse one to nine verse one to nine was the frustration of, of laban's sons they started saying so now jacob has taken everything what inheritance do we have and the bible is showing us how god assisted jacob to produce that result are you ready and it came to pass that at the time that the cattle conceived that i lifted up my eyes and saw where in a dream so jacob was dreaming and the dream now revealed what was happening that was not there physically what did he see in a dream i behold the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring staked speckled and i beheld i saw in my dream that there were some cattle that were making these ones to be pregnant that were not part of the are, are you with me now he's not awake oh he's seen in a dream 11 hmm. and the angel of the lord so the angel was there we know that there are angels and other cattle came from another realm he spoke to me in a dream and he said jacob and i said here i am verse 12 mm. and he said lift now thy eyes and see all the rams an angel is showing him another ram somewhere that is not part of laban's flock all they needed was laban's females the males came from another realm the same way all the fallen angels needed was the females of men the males were the angels with their seed all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring staked speckled and grizzled for i have seen i had to introduce some other animals to come and give you speed of result because i have seen the wickedness of laban so i came to assist you with extraordinary result that is not of this realm 13 I am the God of Bethel this is why I'm doing it where you anointed with a pillar and where you vowed a vow unto me he said arise get thee out of this land and out of thy kindred Jacob woke up and all of a sudden the males were not seen physically but when the females gave birth they were all speckled and Laban said how did this thing happen but God said, Jacob, let me show you. So when you see a woman frying Akara and building a house with that Akara, there is an assistance. It, it cannot just be about 10,000. No, the realm of the spirit came to assist men. This is a testimony of this ministry. This is a testimony of my life. We are not alone. He sent his angel. There is the angel of his presence. And if you don't believe what I just taught you the devil will destroy you and you will never now when you see unusual results you don't question it because I have shown you that heaven can assist men he said remember the Bethel I am the God of Bethel so was that angel an angel no I am the God I came to supervise your speed I have seen how Laban mocked you and is it not me that said I will restore so let me do it now i will bring my own male cattle from everywhere are you seeing why the bible said the cattle on a thousand key where is it 
is not a location on earth. The cattle. God has it. The next time somebody gets a miracle alert and you are asking where did the money come from, does that sound wise? No. Lest Satan should take advantage of us for we are not ignorant. I have taught you now that the realm of the spirit can assist men. The same way when you see, so that you stop this counseling that doesn't make sense. You see an unusual thief, an unusual troublemaker, a man who marries 11 wives and is not tired. That man does not need counseling. What's the name of that group that used to discipline men? That social group. Social welfare. Even if you like report him to EFCC, there is a spirit. A normal man should be satisfied with his wife alone. The moment a spirit comes, no. Unusual characteristics, unusual attributes, unusual wickedness. When a man carries a knife and takes one of our little ones here and is slaughtering a baby like this, my brother, my sister, that's not a normal human being. A spirit is using his hands to hold a knife. Remember that when these spirits show up, they are so wicked. Jesus said one of the signs, he says before the coming of God, it shall be like the days of Noah. That means there will be a repeat of this again. These spirits in an unusual way will multiply wickedness. But the hope is that the power of God too and the assistance from heaven will also be multiplied upon the saints. That means that the revivals that are coming, you will see dimensions of the spirit at work in a man that you have never seen in church history. Spirit. So accidents don't just happen. No. You are just driving and then the car just veers off. My brother, the car did not just veer off. A spirit attempting in frustration to either kill you. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad whether that happened to your loved ones. So that's why God is teaching us. A pastor can have a ministry. And when the ministry wants to rise, because he's ignorant of this, that spirit can enter him. And all of a sudden you will find out that it's five months of intent hatred from members they will hate you for no cause and the ministry dies lest Satan should take an advantage of me demons can enter people demons can enter homes they can enter churches when they enter they execute the will of Satan you can be born again they will not touch your spirit but I guarantee you they will come to your mind and build a fortification around your mind and still feel safe as though they were in your spirit so that your being born again makes no difference as far as you are concerned this is the mystery behind these things so you see them in your sleep when you wake when you sleep and you wake up and read like i shared with you ah we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness and you don't know who to tell you are sad Good things want to happen. These wicked spirits come in. Let me tell you, progress and breakthrough is not very difficult. It's the spirits that make it so hard. You are near your breakthrough like this. Do you know these spirits can relocate your destiny helper just so that you will suffer? While men slept, the enemy came with his seed and planted it don't feel embarrassed that when you look at your life you see the outworkings of these seeds because I don't know if we have that time now if we don't have it we'll do part four at after the miracle service no problem I don't just want to rush this you have to appreciate this for me to teach you the dimensions of deliverance because casting out a spirit is only one of the dimensions of deliverance if you stop there you didn't do well because the spirit will return are we together if I push this door open and I leave that door open am I still safe please talk to me that spirit for sure 
will come back their determination to return to you was not left as a secret in the bible the bible is very clear about the fact that if a demon leaves you it will try to come back that's why you find out that people can be free for 10 years from poverty and then 17 years the spirit now comes he say Ka, it's been a while let me come back a man can be married loves his wife after she gives him three or four children and then all of a sudden what he was doing when he was 20 21 comes back when he's 41 that's why you find out that a man loves god and is working passionately and then before you know it when he's age 55 he will go back into a gay lifestyle or do something and you are wondering at 55 the american nation ignored this satan proposed a doctrine to the west that exited the issue he, he just created a safe zone for himself in our teachings notice that satan didn't remove everything he just found the hardest part of it and created a theology that keeps him safe and look at the result today listen hold on guys let me tell you this listen to me I have been a victim of these things that I'm telling you. If you don't conquer this thing, you will never last. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That's the reason why it looks like no matter, no matter how you do well, oh, um, there's no cause in my life. I am free. I don't have any, no devil. Don't talk about any cause to me. The spirit will just keep quiet and be watching you. And all of a sudden, the same way it took your father and rubbished his life, took your mother and rubbished her life, you will suddenly find out that you got married. You find out that you got married. Watch this. And all of a sudden, you will become a replica of your father. A replica. Remember, he started with your father slapping your mother. He said sorry once. Then he did it again. The third time he said, I won't say sorry again. I will give you a dirty slap. I paid your dowry. Now, because you thought you were a pastor, it will leave you just like that. And then you keep managing it for a while. And then after nine years, the demons will make sure it bites you where it is hard. And you turn and give her a slap and find yourself. And two of you will sit down and counsel yourself. Say it will never happen. And before you know it, you would have done it many times. I'm not telling you this to show you how powerful Satan is. I'm only giving you a sense of appreciation because deliverance is possible and complete deliverance is possible. If complete deliverance does not happen to you, you will never possess your possession. Believe me. Believe me. This is the Bible. Obadiah 117. Please give it to us. The sons of Jacob will possess. It is their possession. But there is a mystery are you seeing why many of our parents just said don't worry i will get the job for 25 years they didn't get any other job 25 years no other job no lifting what of the families where women are the ones who feed the men if you are a man and you ever try to rise up those horns will squash you down when mommy called me sorry to just make reference to her i saw her text the fact that i don't reply your text doesn't mean i don't look at it when i saw her text i knew immediately what was wrong i knew that they were controlling powers that have followed the life of this dear young man i prayed for him here before he left and i knew that if god does not help this man you will be surprised that one day are you seeing why people go abroad for 10 years and return back like thieves you don't hear from them from a long time you think they built houses they are coming to give you money they return back in shame they start moving from country to country through deserts to arrive in lagos when the young man sent me a text i looked at it somebody gave you a job and People don't just change their mind. When things just change suddenly, just know that a spirit just came in. The same way if it can change for the positive. I hate you, but I just change. You know that, ah, this is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost has stepped in. The man, and I called him. How are you, my friend? 
I said fine I said let's pray I said when I pray for you you are going to get the job father in the name of Jesus it's not what I'm saying Jesus said go it is what you are standing on it is not just the articulateness of your words it is the office and the revelation that backs you so you can say one word go and the demons don't hear go the demons see all the mysteries that support what you are saying this is what produces result many people think it is in the articulateness of the english i now standing by my left adjure you that you move now that is grammar my brother demons don't hear grammar the revelation when jesus said go go is not enough to take demons away it was the rock that he was standing on two houses were built it is the rock you are standing on he said this is how i will build my church you will not just speak it is what you are speaking on that supports your results when i prayed for that gentleman i just dropped the phone i knew what would happen because all i did you would think it is me that produced the result I know what to tell the Holy Spirit I know the factor that must be introduced in that equation I knew that except the angel of the Lord comes to rescue and because they are always ascending and descending they confirm the words of his messengers all I did was to create space for the Holy Spirit let there be space for you in this equation and all of a sudden he steps in and I don't know how many hours I don't think it was up to three hours you see mommy dancing here she's not just dancing for nothing that's why you hear somebody say i just came for koinonia and think the things didn't just change god will examine your equations and see how you threw him out and just say okay let me be introduced here and all of a sudden things change things change i will stop here so that we'll pray after miracle service i will teach you now on casting out devils and i'll teach you deliverance through transformation and the discipline of conformity all of this will come in let's do part four let's not rush this thing i want us to take some time hold on before you stand up to take some time to pray it is not a secret that these demons are around they use all kinds of ways to enter your life and the flesh is their greatest access you are alone in the room and you are hearing sounds bam ceiling window looks like it's opening they are looking for an access point how can i make this person fear and doubt the faithfulness of god so that i can find expression in his life you are just hearing like wind is blowing all of a sudden you imagine somebody has to be near me and then anger have you noticed that every time good things are coming a good relationship a brother just comes just at the point he's about to propose that week something dangerous happens you are at your angriest point and the brother says no i can't marry you then you return back these are the spirits playing on the minds of the saints messing up our breakthroughs the day you are supposed to go for a job interview you are running then your car breaks down your car didn't have any business breaking down but it broke down as soon as you arrive there they say sorry the gate is closed so you stand there and say life not life spirits spirits my brother spirits they are about to pay your father his gratuity the demons will hook the money until the day they diagnose him of having cancer that will spend 150,000 for chemotherapy and the rest then the money suddenly comes and because you have to use it to spend it and spend it and spend it and spend it how about students that enter the exam hall they thought they went alone you conduct tutorials for others and enter the exam hall as soon as you sit down you look at the paper but I solved this question yesterday night what happened these demons hijack your understanding when you are out of the exams you go back and see the paper in your house that you solved it with sometimes you're on your way to the exam to write your final year exam and you forget one question paper in your pocket you didn't forget you were assisted to leave it there all of a sudden an invigilator comes and says, what is that stand up and said no that's it you are going
listen to what i'm telling you because god delivered me myself it will be impossible to be in ministry at this level just talking and saying this i am a product of the deliverance that happens upon mount zion there are people there is no good thing you give them that blesses them give them money it will be the reason for their trouble help them give them favor they will cause trouble our loved ones may be like that for many years the church has been deceived and misled into thinking everything is just normal into thinking oh everything is fine i am okay just because we have some little money we allow the devil fool us into believing that we are all right the devil can allow you to continue being a preacher keep winning uh, the the loss keep healing the sick while he hijacks your mind and continues to do what he's doing at age 12 you see your son already reproducing you and you are saying my god what is this brothers and sisters i tell you the truth by the authority of the word of god i know that i'll be criticized by many people for these teachings but let me tell you this i was called into the office of an apostle listen i share with you a mystery that will help you to possess your inheritance i will not lie to you and sit you down and allow the devil tear your life into pieces let this deliverance be perfected in you you will you will be shocked at the things that will happen you're already hearing testimonies job will become child's play everything will become child's play barrenness stories there are many of us who would have been in ministry by now the call of god is upon you you know the call of god is upon you but these spirits won't let you rest they are all around you they will make sure that every helper god brings to your life you do something to them that drives them against you that's why some of us don't have friends it's not like you are bad the moment a friend comes to your life wonderful person oh i i i love you i want to help you the spirits will make something happen you will betray the person you will lie against the person you will do something stupid that will kill your opportunity and all of a sudden they will leave you but tonight brothers and sisters the devil is a liar i don't know if there's someone here who is tired who is saying enough is enough i can't let this happen if you are free your loved ones are not free so in any case there is something for you to do I've not yet taught you next the next time we meet when we now start talking of deliverance we are going to look at the deliverance ministry of Jesus just Jesus leave Paul leave this just Jesus and we are going to see what Jesus did with this spirit and you will see that Jesus said this kind go it not there is a kind you don't just generically tell demons go no there are different spirits the way you drive a fallen angel from influencing a life is not the same way you cast out a demon now the fallen angels may be illegal occupants but the demons are legal occupants they came by birth the women gave their wombs freely so they are not just run no they have a right This kind goeth not. This kind goeth not. This kind goeth not. Listen, I shared with you during the prayer and fasting. Remember, 
that there is a physical atmospheric temperature that drives demons by itself not um, there is a there is a physical there are places on earth that demons cannot stay there's no preacher there the environment itself drives them it's in your it's in your it's in your bible that when a demon leaves a man it goes through where dry regions dry regions hoping it will find something dry that it and, and not finding any it's uncomfortable and it comes back who casted it from that place nobody preached to it it left that place and preferred to come and fight you than to remain in the wilderness listen witchcraft was a proposition that these spirits brought to men men are not so smart to know that you you should kill somebody there are wicked people from where we come from that will exchange the life even of their children for themselves have you seen old people who don't die every time they are sick you hear that someone is dead and then they, they are alive all of a sudden they become fine no sir read in the bible a king who slew his son to keep his own life ah, ah. nobody will bring a knife to my neck to keep it ah we are going to pray it's just going to be praying in tongues now i want you to find a corner my brother my sister take your life serious in the next five minutes instrumentalists just charge the atmosphere for us blast in tongues and refuse upon mount Zion. and it shall come to pass in that day and it shall come to pass in that day in that day in that day that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder and the yoke from off your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing please pray pray please pray if you are tired hold the hands of somebody that can agree with you Pray for your destiny. Pray. Enough is enough, oh God. The victory of Christ, the work of Jesus on the cross, cannot be in vain. The substitutionary sacrifice of the Son of the living God cannot be in vain.
It's time for the ministry to open. It's time for your finances to come. It's time for prophecy to find expression. Hello, him Adonai. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hello, him Adonai. Thy kingdom come. Thy will. Hello, him Adonai. Hello, him Adonai. Thy will be. Hello, him Adonai. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. This prayer is a serious prayer. As we pray, sisters, I want you to lay your hands on your womb. As we are praying, brothers, just pray in tongues. I like you to declare that no seed of any entity that is not of God will find I will not give birth to any stranger. No, Lake Katoskata Barata, Shanaka Toskata. Pray. No matter the ordinances of the fathers, no matter the enchantments of the ancient, I come by a new order and I declare my womb will produce that seed of the woman that will bruise the head of the serpent. I cause fire broil. I cause fire broil. Cause every devil. Sabatata. Sakatakatakata. Lekatakate. Mount Brakos Kotope Rekete. Rapakato Rekete Liata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Brothers, I'd like you to pray. The spirit that keeps men in one place. You don't move forward. You don't move backward. You stay. No productivity. Every gentleman here, open your mouth and blast in tongues. Father in the heavens, this is better. Shabbatakatoskata. The yokes, the altars, and everything that tie my life, that tie my destiny, by the mystery of deliverance, I challenge. I challenge. It is upon Mount Zion. The spirits that cause failure. Hallelujah. Listen. Demons came into being when the spirit assisted men. So your victory comes into being when the spirit assists you. He says, I am the God of Bethel. I have seen the oppression that Laban has done. The victory will not just happen. Forget about the physical things in the realm of the spirit. You are going to cry for divine assistance. I provoke the ministry of angels over every affair of my life. Lift your voice and pray. Cry. Are they not ministering spirits? Are they not ministering spirits? My brothers and sisters, are they not ministering spirits? Send to minister for them that be the heirs of salvation. I call for assistance from heaven. Oh God of Jeshurun, the helper of men, the lifter of men, the helper of men, the lifter of men, the deliverer. Shaka Angels on a 
assignment angels on assignment angels on assignment angels on assignment judging the wicked delivering the prophecy of God concerning my life Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Every attribute of the flesh that gives access to any spirit in my life by the mystery of the blood, I declare that that door is closed forever. Lift your voice and pray. Come on. Lift your voice and pray. Still pray. I tell you, I feel fire in this place. Listen, everything God has shown you, either as a revelation from His Word or as a revelation from the realm of the Spirit, you are going to declare. Jacob did not just see the spotted calves and left them in the realm of the Spirit. They had to come and interact. The word must become flesh. I like you to lift your voice and cry. Jacob's katabata. Every anointing, every mantle, every mandate, every dimension, the prophetic, the apostolic, prosperity, increase, speed, deliverance that God has shown me. Lord, you showed me victory. I declare, I declare, I declare. It must find expression. Pray. prayer we are going to pray listen carefully whether you are an usher or not please if anyone is under the anointing or manifesting around you just help them are we together the very serious prayer we're going to pray now you are going to pray that if by any means there is any spirit entity in my life or around me it's time for you to come out it's time for you to go listen as you pray this prayer many strange things will start happening to you don't worry about it you just focus on this prayer and pray with all your heart and watch what happens say in the name of jesus say it in the name of jesus i decree and declare by the authority of the lord jesus christ that any spirit entity 
finding expression in my mind in my body around my life hear the word of the Lord I cast you out of my life now lift your voice and pray Pray, fire is falling. Pray, fire is falling. Shabbatakata. I cast every spirit. I cast every devil. I cast every spirit by the power of the Holy Ghost. My mind, my body, around my life, around Koinonia, in the name of Jesus, around my family. If you are married, also pray for your family. Pray for your children. I cast every devil. healing fibroid now the Lord is ministering to me a mighty deliverance is going to happen now it's starting with ladies any spirit entity that comes in the form of a man and attempts to oppress you in the night right now in the name of Jesus Christ let the fire from heaven fall right now and command i command that spirit to go help them right now any spirit entity using the face of anyone to molest you and close doors inside outside i command deliverance now i command deliverance now let the daughters of jacob possess their possession in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. I'm hearing in my spirit uncontrolled anger. It's a spirit. It's living people right now. Uncontrolled anger. It's, a, it's an unusual anger. Rage. It comes, you can tear anything and you can do anything. I'm seeing fire in the name of Jesus. Anyone who is a victim of this operation, right now in the name of Jesus, I bring you deliverance. I bring you deliverance by the power of the Holy Ghost. Uncontrolled anger. I come against it now. Please help her.
I'm seeing a vision and the Lord is asking me to pray on that case in this vision I'm seeing someone dream that's what I'm seeing now and in that dream you keep seeing yourself going back either to your old house or to a primary school or writing an exam you are finished it's a strong spirit of delay i stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace help your wife right now in the name of jesus at the count of three the spirit of delay hear the word of the lord let god's people go now one two three i command that spirit go now go now please help them go now this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind no devil should take you back again i command that spirit go now i cost that spirit now if there is anyone you know whether you are here or anyone you know that for some reason has not been able to take in in the name of barrenness whether you are here or you are standing for them i want you to agree i want to pray let's see the devil that will stop them from taking it in the name of jesus anyone you know and you are standing for that the devil i don't care what the medical report is that the devil has come to make sure that they will not celebrate children in the name that is above all names we release children from heaven in the name of jesus we release children from heaven we open every barren womb in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the lord is showing me a group of people you see you have dreams frequently and in the dreams you see yourself receiving things and it's something that in the physical you are hoping to receive but the moment you see it in that dream it will never happen again it's an irony it's like the opposite of what you see in dreams is what happens the lord is asking me to deliver those people now please help her help her just stand near your wife so that she doesn't have to fall right now in the name of jesus Zatia, 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 Shekene Kosha, Brakatos Karikata, in the name that is above all names, I decree and declare from the realm of the spirit, let there be deliverance for you now. Let there be deliverance for you now. Just two more points and we're done look at me if you have seen this pattern i'm about to describe in your family then i want you to listen carefully it's always that the future is worse than the past you never have a situation where you leave certain things and go higher and higher you look at all your loved ones they once walked they once married they once had children they once had a house you are in a situation where the future is never brighter than the past It's always once upon a time this was happening I need to crush that devil from your life please help them once upon a time I was rich once upon a time I was married once upon a time i was on fire for god once upon a time i was a pastor i had a church now the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth ever brighter unto the perfect day when your tomorrow becomes worse than your yesterday there is a spirit reversing the equation lift your hands i want to pray for you 
in the name that is above all names i declare that any force from hell that is responsible for aborting a glorious tomorrow to take the events of the past and still bring it into your tomorrow right now at the count of three i declare that spirit must let you go one two three let them go now let them go now by the anointing of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ hallelujah please just be patient with me we'll end now my spirit is heavy circles of repeated sicknesses i want to pray now it's not a normal thing whether it is hepatitis whether it is a blood related disease or whether it is every month malaria every month malaria every month typhoid you treat it it still comes back every month headache every month whatever it is hold on please the lord is showing me something i just saw like a pile of money and then i saw it disappear and the lord said there are people money physically disappears like lives their life i'm not saying you waste it you can keep ten thousand and come back and find seven thousand and nobody was in that house it's not just money items you can wash clothes and hang it you you didn't steal it you will come back you will not find it listen where well, this is a, a deliverance series just allow me to help that lady I'm seeing a lady in a vision now. You were alone. You washed your underwear in the night. By the next day, you didn't find two of them again. It's gone. From that day, something happened in your life in a strange way. Severe menstrual pain is one of the things you started having. Uncontrollable pain. In the name of Jesus, everything the devil has taken from anyone, I decree and declare by the anointing of the Spirit, let there be restoration now. Let there be restoration now. Let there be restoration now. The Lord is showing me someone. Every time you see someone die in the dream, a few weeks later it will happen physically. Now you have seen your loved ones. You saw them last week. You saw like a, somebody was announcing to you that I don't know if it's your mother or something that died. If we don't pray for you, it's going to happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? I prophesy right now upon your life by the anointing of the Holy Ghost I command that death to pass over your family I command that death to pass over your family Hallelujah Just, just let me just talk about two issues I'm struggling to share what God is showing me now. This has to do with a group of ladies. Listen. There is a lady here. Every time you see yourself in a dream, you are a man, not a woman. That's why I'm struggling to share what I'm saying physically you are a lady but every time you see yourself in a dream it's like you are carrying the form of a man this thing has affected you even in the area of relationship if a guy looks at you and says i love you it's like it's like um it's it's like you feel as if you are gay it's it's like something has numbed the capacity to receive love as a lady because of that encounter it's a demonic thing that I have to pray for you for a very demonic thing 
I'm seeing like smoke. This is strange. And then it is it's just like moving around in the air. Wherever those groups of people are, I don't believe it's just one person. It's an operation of darkness. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands right now. And I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. Be free from that demonic siege now. Be free from that demonic siege now. Ah, hold on. There is a lady. A physical person appeared to you. Not a dream. I'm not talking of your dreaming. Physically. Physical. Like you are seeing me like this. Appeared to you. And was having a conversation with you. Appeared to you and was having a conversation with you. And from that conversation, your life was never the same again. It looked like it was a woman that was appearing and talking to you. Like revealing to you some secrets that had to do with the past. And from that day, you started hearing voices even in the afternoon. You can sit down and hear like people are discussing. I need to pray for you. If I don't pray for you, very soon they will admit you in the hospital. Because they will say you are talking and behaving like somebody who has a psychosomatic condition. Wherever that person is in the name of Jesus. I may not call you out because of time. But I declare right now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That devil. That spirit. In the name of Jesus. Be free from it now. I was going to pray for repeated cycles of sickness. Let that be the last. Let's pray. If you know in this place that you find out that certain sicknesses never leave you they keep repeating cycles just place your hand on your chest i'm about to pray it doesn't matter what part of your body and what sickness you just place your hand on your chest i'm going to pray someone will shout under the anointing when that happens the anointing for this healing is not a sickness it's a pattern that god is breaking now the moment that shout happens i will rebuke that and then we are done for the night we will continue the miracle service we will talk about it shortly thank you jesus just lay your hands there the power of god is looking for one person there's somebody that will shout that's the shout right now in the name of jesus by the anointing of the holy spirit every pattern of reoccurring infirmity reoccurring sickness whether it's a blood related disease every pattern i say it again of reoccurring sickness reoccurring disease right now by the power of the holy ghost i command the spirit responsible lose your hold now lose your hold now Lose your hold now. Lose your hold now. Lose your hold now. Hallelujah. Please pray. Tonight is a night of signs and wonders. Shabalakato sabra kahasadevalakato. Please pray from the depth of your heart. Exodus 
Exodus chapter 14 and verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians that ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. He said, let me read it for you now. And Moses said unto them, not God said unto them, Moses said unto them, the people, fear ye not. He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you when, when, today. He said, for the Egyptians whom you have seen today, he said, ye shall see them again no more forever. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that tonight is my night for total deliverance. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice. Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Please be sensitive. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight is the last segment of our deliverance series. Please let's have the anointing oil. Um, just come keep them here in front. Hallelujah. And um, I truly prayed from my heart, trusting the Lord, that something will really, 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 truly happen in somebody's life. Hallelujah. I have seen a life 
that Satan oppressed and I have seen a life that God gave victory to. The difference is as clear as night and day. In the name of Jesus Christ. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 17. Let your spirit be open. Let your spirit be alive. Hallelujah. There's so much noise here. Is it the fan? Please help me technical. You will have to work on this. If it's a fan, please switch it off. Please. I need to be. It's affecting me. Please. Hallelujah. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 17. It says, but upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. It says, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. We've been examining the mystery of deliverance, helping the body of Christ to step into supernatural levels and supernatural dimensions of victory in Christ it is my personal conviction as a man of God that it is not enough to read your Bible and see the things that the Bible declares should be our inheritance but that we must press through faith and understanding to a point and a realm in the spirit are we together where we will have access and walk in the experience of these realities and tonight we must force this thing to work in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Three levels of deliverance. Let's get straight to the business of tonight. Um, the teachings are available. Part 1, 2 and 3. So for time's sake I may not go back doing any recap. Please bear with me. We have a lot to do tonight. And um, we're working to gain time. There are three levels of deliverance that I want to teach you. And in this teaching you're about to hear now is the reason why probably many believers do not gain complete deliverance. Most of the denominations that we have um, in one way or the other have engaged something related to deliverance but the challenge usually is that we pick one of the three and i've shared with you again and again as you know i'm very sympathetic to the body i'm sent to the body so every time i talk about the body of christ it is not in any way from a standpoint of sarcasm are we together um so as I teach you this, I pray that God will open your heart. And if you're a man of God, I'd like you to examine these things very deeply and find out where you probably may be missing it in communicating the power of God to deliver to your congregation. Number one, the first level of deliverance is the casting out of the spirit influences in your life and at the back of your challenges the first level of deliverance has to do with casting out the spirit influences in your life and if not in your life at the back of your challenges behind every challenge is a spirit that sponsors its continuity are we together the first level listen very carefully the first level of deliverance has to do with casting out the spirit influences there are always spirit influences either in our lives or at the back of the situations and circumstances that challenge god in our lives so the first level of deliverance has to do with casting out the spirit influences i thought you would want to put maybe two here influences in our lives and at the back of our challenges. Carefully. I want you to find a way of convincing yourself tonight. At the back of almost every challenge 
and every destiny pegged in one position every family every business every career every home is a spirit entity that is sent and assigned to ensure that that process remains that way are we together now we are not in ignorance as to the fact that our world is also full of spirits not just men spirits and that these spirits are also on assignment just like angels and that at the back of people's lives and then at the back of mysteriously um, disturbing situations are spirits sent deliverance is not complete when the spirit entity that are behind the situations in people's lives are left there this is where i think that a lot of people especially people who value um, education and intellectualism and science to an exaggerated dimension this is where we miss it there are people today who will never agree that there are spirit entities manipulating the lives of people and i find that disturbing because jesus did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that in fact i'll be showing you shortly that when he proclaimed the messianic prophecy that was upon him are we together now he went out and began to heal and the first set of those he addressed were those who had devils there were spirits behind them he met a woman who had been bound for 18 years and the bible says he said woman thou art loosed before he laid hands to heal her there was a spirit behind her situation these are the three doorways that granted it access number one covenants number two ignorance number three disobedience it is possible that a covenant is broken and the spirit still uses another channel to route your life you must be aware of all the channels available are we together so number one the first level of deliverance is casting out the spirit influence in your life and at the back of your challenges i have ministered deliverance to people again and again and again and i see this all the time i see the shock like many of you have experienced sometimes on the faces of the people because they would never otherwise believe that there was a spirit influence a sudden in a very strange way in less than one week your life just didn't know although there's a lot of argument among men of god whether or not there is something called deliverance ministry um, um I, I i'm not here to create argument but i believe with all my heart i believe in the full gospel and the full gospel captures a dimension of god that is able to deliver and we know that it is god's system to allocate graces to men so i believe that it is possible i believe from the authority of scripture that there is something called a deliverance ministry you'll be foolish to believe in the healing ministry you'll be foolish to believe in the evangelical ministry you'll be foolish to believe in the ministry of signs and wonders we believe that there are people called to minister prosperity to minister leadership why will we reject that there are people specially anointed to minister deliverance i think it's just because of our resentment deliverance is a very messy ministry it's, it's not a ministry that comes with a lot of organization usually it is presumed that if you are dull and unenlightened uneducated and you don't know what to do with your life you are most likely called into the deliverance ministry and, and it's not so usually people who are posh nice excellent administrative intelligent calculated uh, will usually not receive that dimension of the call and, and, and I think it's the way it has been done in Nigeria and Africa because we have demons shouting, talking, you know, most when you see ministers that minister deliverance, usually they are unkept, shabby, unintelligent. They don't process their understanding. The churches are, are not well cultured. And so over time, we have adopted an understanding that the messier you are, the more unenlightened you are, you are most likely called into that ministry. There's, there's no such thing as that but i believe there there should be specific people anointed and sent 
if we don't believe in deliverance ministry then there shouldn't be a healing ministry now are we together the second level of deliverance and like i said if you believe you are called into the deliverance ministry this may probably be an area you may want to adjust it's called deliverance the deliverance of transformation through the word of god this is the second level of deliverance deliverance of or through transformation many people do not know that this is a dimension of deliverance as valid as casting out a spirit deliverance that comes to a man through engaging that man's mind and understanding in a process that the bible identifies as transformation herein lies the tragedy behind endless deliverances where a spirit is casted out it goes returns casted out goes returns and then sometimes we build a theology now this is the part of deliverance i do not believe that a believer should become a victim of a spirit forever and should have an endless cycle of continual deliverance for life the bible does not show that now we saw that jesus delivered men and they were delivered and delivered completely the apostle paul was delivered are we together the woman with the alabaster box the one who jesus casted out seven devils but you see the thing about Jesus' ministry, and, and I'm going to show you now. I'm going to show you something very powerful. The Bible says, the man in Gadara. Let, let's go to that. Let's go to that scripture. Let's look for it. Where is that scripture? Help me. Mark chapter 5. I think I'm right. Give us Mark chapter 5. Say deliverance through transformation. Say it again. Shout it. Deliverance through transformation. Now, this is a very interesting story. The Bible tells us that in the country of the gatherings, Jesus himself, I want to see, um, I want us to read from verse 12 to verse 15. There's something I want to, I want to show you there. Deliverance through transformation. Now watch this. And the devils besought him saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. So spirits now at the back of a man's madness are we together and then and forthwith jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea and they were about two thousand can you imagine that and were choked in the sea 14 and they that fed the swine follow me now and told it in the city fled sorry and told it in the city and in the country and they went out to see what that was done 15 15. sitting and clothed and in his right mind jesus didn't just leave him he knew that something needed to be done to his mind too it was not just his spirit that needed to be right so when jesus casted that devil he didn't wave him and say go he said come and join this teaching ministry that will need to transform your mind and the bible says they came and met him sitting in his right mind you can be delivered with a wrong mind are you listening to me now it matters that we must engage this dimension of deliverance the dimension of reorienting our spiritual understanding this one comes through the ministry the teaching ministry of the word is how people experience this dimension of deliverance and i can tell you sincerely speaking this dimension of deliverance is very scarce in the church to teach the word does not mean to declare and to preach we generally say you are a preacher a teacher of a word is an explainer one who brings the saints into a comprehension of the character the person and the working knowledge of the word you have no reason to have weekly gatherings as a man of god if you are not teaching the word you can be an evangelist and come into a land three days win the souls apologize for the sound and i think there's noise somewhere i'm sure they're working on it are we together now 
you can come in as an evangelist you can come in as a missionary and even stay three months five months within a city but if you ever trust god for a church a ministry a platform where you meet with people consistently then it doesn't matter what spiritual office you operate you must trust god for grace to be a teacher of the word otherwise the saints will never experience this dimension of deliverance say deliverance through transformation this entails reorienting your spiritual understanding this entails opening you up to the nature the character and the systems of the kingdom when your mind is enlightened you are open to the nature of god the character of god then the mysteries the systems the principles of the kingdom is taught you when that happens that door that is a stronghold for demons to access your life is closed and closed once and for all let me give you an instance let's assume that an individual is suffering from the ministry of um let's say there's hardship are we together now the spirit come promise he likes to talk about increase so let me use him watch this let's assume that this gentleman here has all kinds of hardship in his life let's even assume his finances and now i pray for him because say by revelation i see that there is a spirit behind that tragedy did you know that if i pray for him he may fall down and stand up he may even experience an instant testimony by evening someone will give him maybe a little check or some money 10,000 20,000 whatever it is but this gentleman will not sustainably stay delivered until I teach him the kingdom principle allocated for keeping the spirit of poverty at bay forever are you getting what I'm saying now now I prayed for him and through the advantage listen carefully there is a prophetic covering over him and he may enjoy some level of results by the reason of that prophetic speaking over his life but for sustainable result to personally keep the spirit of poverty at bay he must understand the economic system of the kingdom failure to do that will only recycle his pain it's a matter of time notice that demon spirits have observed the carelessness of people in the body especially men of god that we are not thorough in creating spiritual enlightenment so they are not afraid to leave are we together so i can look at him before i touch him ah he's manifesting the spirit goes and he gets up and he's happy and i hug him i say okay so go and prosper it is done it is not done i assure you it is not done halfway done that guy, remember the Bible says that spirit will go around and say, I will return to my house. He will come back and find the mental construction of that individual still conducive for his operation. He won't enter alone. He will gather more wicked spirits of poverty, higher than him, and then return to that man. That's why you find out that people receive miracles and breakthroughs. And two weeks later, it looks like everything just knows dives. They refuse to engage in transformation. And sometimes it is members that put that pressure on pastors. They are not trained to sit down and receive the word. We want sharp, sharp everything. Are we together? Man of God, why is my life like this? I, I have watched with shock how that sometimes people can tell me, Apostle A, B, C, D is wrong with my life. And then I tell them, okay, listen to the following messages and then come and see me afterwards maybe listen to gaining spiritual stature listen to this and that and they just say thank you and sometimes i can even point and say the media stand is there just go there and they'll give you the teachings they will laugh and do as if they are going to turn and then turn around just greet and say sir just touch my head that's all me i want you see that it's a sign that many of those people may not receive complete deliverance and the danger is that if they don't receive it they will go back and then in their frustration they'll say this man of god may not really be a man of god are we together have you been to the hospital where a doctor will give you an injection now there's that one you take it immediately you turn and receive it right now and then he can now tell you okay there's this drug in addition to that injection take this morning afternoon evening for five days 
after five days return back and let me look at your condition are we together now if you take that injection you can decide to go back and be careless it's amazing how your health is dependent on those drugs and then you don't take them and after five days you return and say doctor something is wrong and the doctor said no if you did what i told you i already know what should happen so i'm surprised that this is not happening transformation through the word he came and met the man in his right mind remember that the man later became an evangelist and won the decapolis 10 cities because his mind was right the bible says in romans chapter 12 when you read from verse 1 and 2 specifically verse 2 it says um and do not be conformed to this world i've taught you again and again the greek word there is the word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with a dispensation do not be conformed to this world it says but be ye transformed everybody say be ye transformed it's not an advice be ye transformed how by the renewing of your mind transformation renewing your mind is deliverance it is the scriptural way to close the door that authorizes spirit entities to find expression in a person transformation 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 is the way you become spiritual a spiritual man is just it's not just one who prays in tongues a spiritual man is not just one who serves in church listen carefully a spiritual man is not just one who is ordained a spiritual man is not just one who is serving in a department a spiritual man is one who has exalted the word of god listen very carefully and the ways of god above the senses so that man is governed not by his sensory perceptions but by the word of god when the word of god becomes the vista your your plane of looking at life you are a spiritual man you can pray in tongues and ignore the word you are not a spiritual man most times we convince ourselves that just because we find ourselves around dissipating spiritual energy committed in spiritual activities we believe that because we have done that for a long time we are spiritual no that may be religion true spirituality is measured by how much the word of god has not just found expression in your life but has been received and the degree to which you are living by it many people are not spiritual you know it by how they respond to life a little challenge and you see them talking and you are wondering ah, after five years in church ah, i'm stomach pain i'm dying everybody do. We, ah, the word of God is supposed to become a culture, a way of life. It influences your mind. It influences everything about you. The Bible says to be spiritually minded. It says to be carnally minded is death. Not will make you die. It's already death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. It says set your minds above where Christ is seated. Are we together now? you can set your gates not by looking up by indoctrinating yourself with the truth of god's word such that you are immovable you are unbendable that's what it means to be spiritual when you are transformed and you experience this dimension of deliverance you now tear down the strongholds that operate in your life through thought patterns everybody say thought patterns please shout it say thought patterns check every territory where spirits seem to gain grounds the way those spirits gain grounds is by making sure they create a mind control system so that the average person within that spiritual climate thinks in a certain way i'll give you an instance and please i don't want you to feel embarrassed or whatever i am not insulting any territory but for instance if you see a territory where there is a high rate of maybe people getting pregnant without marriage 
you find out that it's not just a wicked spirit that is working there there is also a mindset are we together that a lady of 12 years can be pregnant and the father can say i'm proud of you i mean i can't believe you did this this is this is this is fantastic meaning by tithing you have settled the devourer yet you find out that that man's life does not change call for any kind of meeting that will give financial intelligence he will look at you and say no it's not for us you can go and uh, if god will bless me he will bless me so mindsets we come from different territories some of us come from territories where it is easy for anger to come because revenge is part of the way the culture is built don't let anybody take you for granted an eye for an eye if somebody touches you give it back to him sevenfold as a sign that you are not weak so in such cultures if you don't revenge you are you are tainted as being weak so now you are born again and a brother offends you and there is that itch to revenge and what a joy a spirit has found a platform and the spirit of anger comes and before you know it you wind your hand and give your wife a slap and suddenly remember that you 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 are supposed to have crucified the old man at the cross are we together listen let me tell you you know you are transformed when it takes a long time to trace you to a culture let me say it again you know you are transformed aside from the physiological the physiological features that can show that okay you are yoruba you are hausa you are Igbo, you are south south and all of that aside from that there should be such a level of of an excellent approach to life based on the word of god that if it is based on your communication i should find a hard time knowing whether you are yoruba or hausa or Igbo. it's a sign that the word of god has superimposed your culture and your cultural limitation sadly i can look at people and almost in a heartbeat just say you are from here yes you are from here yes the way you are behaving it looks like you are from plateau state say yes sir say huh they are all like that the way you are it looks like kaduna Abi. you look to me like you are are you from delta i'm from delta how did you know how do i know am i am i mad that's not a very that's not an applause are we together because it's a sign that although you claim to be in christ experientially you are still holding on to the strongholds and the mindsets are we together that your transformation will so shock those around you they looked at the disciples and they wondered ah are this not what what suddenly happened to you they were so changed one time they wanted to go back to this their life of war again they said jesus should we command fire and jesus turn and said do you not know of what spirit you have suddenly forgotten that you are from heaven transformed someone will look at you and say i know you are going to deal with him i trust people from your place Abba, this guy is in for a shock and all of a sudden you reach out to someone in love and hug the person and you look and you say this is strange you say this is not strange i have been called out of every tribe of every tongue listen to me of every nation are we together yes this is the basis let me tell you the truth and i want to say something now that is, is a bit sensitive but listen to me i think that this is the reason why many people especially our loved ones fear certain individuals traveling or marrying or living across certain regions because they fear that based on the default experience are we together now there can be a problem there and they are right except for transformation they are right are we together so someone says oh i want to get married to someone from the north and the mother looks and says is this what is this how you want to repay me after after all i've done to you this is this is and then you now say ah the man is is, is even is that's why a small church has started a walk i say hey he's even a man of god it may not be your father or your mother or your relatives fault they have observed through time that goodness if someone within those regions accept the call you accept the call and accept the stronghold that comes with that call too and so far and almost you know but then they are amazed when they see that there is an excellent mind hallelujah an excellent mind that vetoes your background say i've been called 
Say, say I've been called out of my tribe, out of my tongue, out of my locality. I come from heaven. I only pass through my geographic territory. If you don't understand this, then we are wasting our time this night. Because when we begin to pray, we are going to tell Satan, it is true that you oppress people from Plateau State, but I am not from there. You see that? It is true that you oppress people who are Yoruba people. It is true that you oppress Igbo people. But I only pass through there. My origin. My origin. So you don't tell me, oh, this land was dedicated to this. You may be right. But, ah, I have been called. Something called me out of that tribe and tongue. Let me tell you, the fact that whatever is in your territory is still affecting you is proof that it still recognizes your cultural loyalty. Like, if you are a football fan, let's assume you are a faithful football fan. Of, uh, give me one club side. Let me not create trouble now. Arsenal. And you are so faithful that they have your number. Even when you say I hate them, you can still get a text from them. There's a meeting tomorrow. It's a sign that they still recognize your loyalty, your fellowship. It's amazing how we keep saying we are not tied to these things. And when the spiritual text is sent, you get it. <laughs> the devil says you can talk all your nonsense. As far as I'm concerned, I'm sending a general text of failure to anybody in this family. And you are shocked that it reaches you. I say no my phone you shouldn't receive this that's your business your number was in the database transformation 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 to rush to God receive instant deliverance and run away from God is only implicating yourself the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Listen, he said the righteous run to it. It is say he runs in and then runs out and is saved. He runs into it and stays there. He that dwells, not he that visits. He that dwells. Listen, is the reason why many of our loved ones never receive breakthrough. They hate the house of God. So when they hear that there is a special program, they say, well, since you insist, let me visit. And they come and experience the power of God. And then they tell them, be planted in the house of God. Mm, all this church church thing, I'm not, I'm not in it. Please. Then they go back. And then they find out that it's a matter of time. This spirit's coming. Let me tell you, if you are a pastor, this is one of the reasons why you should trust God to have crowds come. It's not numbers. It's that you are giving God an opportunity to transform more minds. It's not all about just trying to look for a name. Oh, overflows here. We are this. I notice that there are men of God who so, I, I, maybe sometimes well-meaning insult crowds and insult pastors with large membership and make it look like it's not all about crowd. My brother, for God so love how many? That sounds like a crowd to me. He didn't say for God so love Jerusalem. He didn't say for God so love Nazareth. For God so love Judea. No. It is God's will that all men be saved. And then the Bible tells us that part of our ministry is to disciple nations. Have you heard that word? To disciple nations. To disciple nations. Come from the word discipline. To keep them in a position where they learn. To teach them the matters of the kingdom. You must receive an appetite for the word of God. You must receive an appetite. Members must learn the value of sitting with the word to be mentored and to be trained. I have great respect for churches where the average member already knows the usefulness of sitting down to learn. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. One thing is needful and that Mary has chosen to sit at the master's feet. It takes time to produce results so that your mind is changed, transformed. Are we together? So deliverance through transformation and transformation by the renewing of your mind. The word of God being the principal channel for your transformation. Are you willing to submit yourself to be transformed against culture 
against the the nominal mindset the mainstream mindset that comes because let me tell you you become more like Christ when you think like him that I'll forever be changing after you I'll be chasing after you not just for two days not just for one week that I'll forever be chasing after you I'll be chasing after you pant after his word and pant after his presence day and night chapter 1 and verse 8 Joshua the formula that God recommended for success he says this book of the law so the foundation of a believers possessing his possession this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth he says but thou shall meditate therein day and night how long day and night say it after me day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein then and only then shall you make your ways prosperous who will make his way prosperous he says and then you will have good success this is God advising a man number three so that we move to the next level the third level of deliverance and this is the final level is called the discipline of conformity write it down the discipline of conformity this is where you actively participate and this is where a lot of dear brothers and sisters around the world miss it the discipline of conformity as a level of deliverance hmm. Romans chapter 8 and verse 13 and then we'll look at Galatians chapter 6 verse 8 Romans 8 13 one to read is projected one to read let's start again for if ye live after the flesh i told you what the flesh is a way of living a way of thinking are we together it says ye shall what but if ye through the spirit so you will mortify but an agency will empower you you are in grace but the doing is you i told you that grace has dimensions not all dimensions of grace work automatically there is saving grace you don't do anything you just receive there is grace that empowers you to do you participate the disciplinary dimension is your responsibility if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body what will happen to you please talk to me you shall live galatians chapter 6 and verse 8 whatever you ask of me i surrender whatever you ask of me whatever you ask of me i surrender i mean bribery like corruption political party corruption means death period in one word death but he that soweth to the spirit a man can sow to the flesh a man can sow to the spirit both are soils and the bible guarantees that the harvest is waiting for you when you walk in bitterness you are sowing oh dear farmers listen to me you walk in bitterness you are sowing i'm born again but what is this guy trying to show me and you are sowing and the bible says a harvest will come you don't you don't walk with your wife you are fighting your wife you are sowing to the flesh the harvest is that your heavens will be closed the bible said so you are born again you are anointed but for being unwise in treating your wife you pay the price with a closed heaven that tight open and then your disobedience shuts the heavens again 
So a tithing wife Peter is plus one minus one. What's the answer? Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. One of the ways to sow to the flesh is to think that God is an expert in inconveniencing and rubbishing your life. You know, many believers believe that when you hand over your life to God, it's a call to stupidity, especially our generation. What is this you and church? Come, darling. What is you? You're a, you a fine lady. You're a wonderful lady. I mean, there's a, a rich man somewhere. What is this church thing? You're turning your head. Don't mind this stupid apostle around. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. A man can sow to the flesh, and I promise you, whether you stop, whether you scatter the soil, it will still grow. Because they are all fertile soils. Could it be that many people, although the demons were casted, the discipline of conformity, discipline, the spirit of God will empower you, but you must see the value of waking up in the night to pray as a principle that helps you conform. Are we together? Don't sit down there and say, Lord, the grace is not there, it's raining. This night is so cold and you just fresh. You are not serious. You have to speak. You have to create your reality. Someone can meet you and say, my dear, you are a very beautiful lady. There is a bar around. God has granted you the grace. You use your mouth and say no. You can say, well, let's see how things go. You have sown to the flesh. There is a harvest coming. When you get tipsy and a truck jams you, that's the harvest. Where you snuff tramadol and you lie down by the bridge and Mopol comes to carry you and they jail you for five years what that's called harvest say harvest shout it say harvest it doesn't matter how it came listen this is not being under the law get the point this is not being under the law God is not a fool he works with us physically if God tells me to bless you watch this now if God tells me to give you 10,000 if I say come and collect why do you come why do you get up and come and stretch your hand and say thank you you are participating it took discipline for that to happen are we together let me tell you this God can speak and say pastor alpha he will be a mighty man if you don't have the discipline of constraining yourself to conform to that word, you will keep seeing yourself raising wheelchairs in your dream till you die. You will never see it. There is nothing in the kingdom that does not require discipline. He said, he that warreth is not, he that strives for mastery, he said, is not crowned except he strives lawfully. There is no gift of fasting. Hello? Have you ever seen it in the Bible? There is no gift of... Whoever lied to you that fasting, your stomach will not... You will hear all kinds of noise while you are praying. You have to choose between the noise and your destiny. It's the discipline of conformity. Lord, if I stop fasting now, and this grace goes down, what of the people that will be blessed? No, I receive grace, I will pray. You think those who get up in the night and pray and those who fast, just a, a supernatural wind just blew somewhere. No, sir. I'm sorry to say this, but our generation is a very indisciplined generation. That's why we don't become successful. We don't take anything serious, not just God, even our destinies. Are we together? You start a business, you open your shop by 12. You close it by 4 at will. You may have a bottle of olive oil in that shop. I guarantee you, you will still fail. Because there is no discipline. Father, if it be thy will, take this cup off me. But mm, nevertheless, nevertheless, it is within my power. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it up. I have the power to keep quiet. I have the power to speak. When they talk against you, you have the power to keep quiet so that God will now arise and fight. 
Let's not throw everything to God and just make a fool out of our lives. You have the power to be disciplined. God has anointed you to be a good worship minister. You need to be disciplined to wake up in the night to pray and receive songs. And write and edit and receive songs. As a man of God, you are called, you need to be disciplined. To sit down and take notes and research materials. Do you know, let me tell you sincerely. Jordan is here and he will tell you. Do you know how many books I read just for this, this series? You won't believe it. I listened to more than 11 to 15 ministries. Different perspectives. Not because I don't know anything about it. Why will you read so many books just for a series? Everybody say discipline. Please shout it. I know you don't like it. Say discipline. Nothing just happens like that. This is where many of us miss it. There is a dimension of deliverance called the discipline of conformity. You constrain yourself on the strength of what you are looking at. There's too much distraction. You want to be great, but anything goes. Oh, someone is marrying somewhere. I need to run and go. Yet God is calling you a man of God. You have a conference in two days. You are there, one naming ceremony there. You are there again to cut, uh, to, to, to one of, you are, you are just moving up and down. And then you wonder why the power of God does not come. Discipline. There are times I am so tired, humanly speaking. Let me tell you. Sometimes you see it. I can be so tired. The last two weeks I've been ministering every day back to back. You think if I have, if I have my way, what do you think I, I want to be doing now? Just find somewhere, somewhere and, and throw away my phone and, and shut my ears and sleep. It's called discipline. Yes, there is grace. But let me assure you, if you are not disciplined, you are abusing the grace of God. There are many funny graduates around just waiting and believing that with, with indiscipline and carelessness, they don't pay attention to conform to the terms of success. Insult anybody and believe they will prosper. My father is this. No respect for authority. No respect for anything. The discipline of conformity. Philippians chapter 3. We'll read from verse 12 to 15. Philippians chapter 3. Not as though I had already attained. This is Paul. Either were already perfect. The word perfect there is the word mature. But I follow after. That if I may apprehend that for which I am also apprehended of Christ Jesus. 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. One of the sponsors of indiscipline is an arrival mentality. The moment you believe you have arrived, the deception of little results, the deception of little success. One thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and doing what? Reaching forth unto those things that are before me. 14. I... The first two words, please speak to me. I remember this was the guy that taught us the Pauline epistles. I press. I press. Have you read that place that the Bible says to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling? I press towards the mark. I press. I press towards the prophetic word. It is true. That God has told me you are a deliverer in this family. And the grace has come. That grace will make sure I must be on fire. So I press. I wake up in the night. Lord the mantle for the deliverance of this family is in my hands. While they are sleeping they can sleep. But I press. Let every other name fade away. Let every other thing fade away. Ah. Let every other thing fade away. Listen. 
listen it will take you engaging prophecy through discipline otherwise it will never come to pass the ministry you have seen in the spirit no matter how many demons are casted out of you if you don't cooperate with the spirit to come to conform you will never have it you can sit down and see yourself building building an estate I saw an estate and I saw a spirit behind the estate Apostle Joshua Selman can say in the name of Jesus that spirit go the spirit has gone but you do not sustain the discipline to sit down that discipline may mean upgrading your mind that discipline may mean you sitting and speaking every day that discipline may mean you telling certain friends look I'm in a new season I love you I know we're from the same background but honestly I must leave you now discipline I can tell you this from experience you will never do business with God if you ignore this I think don't just think no you have a right to do whatever you want to do it takes discipline to sit down and count the money and say in the name of Jesus I know that I, I have what it takes to complete this nice shirt but in the name of Jesus I choose to say no I love my tomorrow more than my yesterday I love my tomorrow more than today spirit of the living God I will I will I will walk with you I discipline myself it's better to be hungry today than to eat tomorrow's food today Are we together the next time you admire someone with a mighty hand of God let me tell you among the many parts of the equation don't just say he's lucky there is discipline I say this with all humility and not to brag when I stand here by 7 I leave here by 12 almost every Friday it takes discipline do I have to do it if I say I'm not seeing anybody nobody's going to even say apostle you have tried I come and stand here and I go back home and it's not sleep that I'll sleep. Sometimes by five I have to be up to catch a flight. Say discipline. Don't just say Kai God is increasing these people. Discipline. It takes discipline to see God's money and leave it there. Really rest upon your shoulder. I remember a few years ago we went to a particular hotel, very nice hotel, went for a ministration. And I was preparing for the meeting. The hotel had swimming pools, had a lot of things. And these were wonderful people. I mean, when these guys saw this swimming pool, they were happy. They just went, they were swimming, they were playing table tennis. I was just watching them from my And I laughed. The luxury. But somebody is coming three hours later crying and say lord will you change my destiny and i swim away that person's miracle <laughs> there is a time to swim now is not the time don't get me wrong there is a time to swim are we together discipline there are times that i go to minister somewhere and they prepare a very serious honorarium and God says don't collect it bless the people say discipline it takes discipline to obey lay your hands on your head and say Lord take in discipline out of my life forever pray Shabakato Sadabalakata discipline of conformity to take my destiny seriously the grace to take my assignment seriously the grace to take the destinies of others seriously that through discipline I can cast out devils from my life discipline in waking up early discipline in studies discipline this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind I press by faith as a sign that I believe my future hallelujah listen please sit down thank you if these three levels of deliverance doesn't happen to you 
Forget about possessing your possession. The spirit may be casted out. But your mindset will allow it to stay. Do you know, for someone, you don't have any spirit in you. But this is the access point. For others, just discipline. God told you that there is something you have to read in a book. You bought that book since January till today. And the spirit of God is waiting for you. And you are saying, Lord, you've not brought your word to pass. And God said, no, 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 no. I answered you since January. The indiscipline to sit down. I will go to Jordan's bookstore tomorrow. Uh, Jordan, is this book around? It will arrive next week. You don't follow up. All successful people, whether in the secular or in this, even those who drink and smoke, they are disciplined. Forget all that acting they do. They are very disciplined. Disciplined with money. There are people like that. God has casted the devourer but indiscipline. You collect a salary of 30,000. You carry your friends immediately to a restaurant and blow up 20,000 and wonder why the spirit of poverty still remains. Discipline. As a student, you are wearing a uniform of 10,000, 20,000 and all your parents give you in a month is 5,000. Say indiscipline. That's right. Indiscipline. I don't cook. You are a student. I don't, it's not, I'm, I'm, it's not my thing. This, this, our pride is what, in Africa especially, is why these spirits never let us go. What of our parents? The discipline of getting, oh, sir, um, God is going to touch you, but can you be disciplined and just wait? Um, I'm not, mm, I, I can't do that, I can't. I, I, you want life to bless you at your own terms. That's a joke. Who for the joy that was set before him? What did he do? Endured. Endurance takes discipline. Have you seen people in a gym? Someone in a gym trying to work out. Have you seen people laughing in a gym? Except if they are producing videos for you to buy. But if, if they are in a gym, meaning be carrying all those things, look at the world heavyweight. Their faces become ugly. And yet they are determined. While he's doing that, he's seen the trophy already. You need to see something that gives you the strength to not be distracted. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's for me. in your family where all the women marry terrible and unserious men watch this now now it is true that you have been delivered that spirit was casted out are we together please hold on and then God now helps you to think well and then God says wait until my will comes what does he tell you wait until my will comes but in discipline your body is itching all of a sudden one irresponsible guy just appears from nowhere and says, um, uh, you know how things are, don't keep waiting like this and you stand and God is telling you the choice is yours. Do you know, if you get up, you know the man is smoking, you know he's drinking, he says, I don't smoke all the time, once in a while, I say, okay, I can make do with that. Remember, you are making a choice through indiscipline and God is watching, but I'm supposed to deliver you, I'm, I'm bringing you out, I'm using you as a specimen and you say, God, I can't wait again, please. I can't wait. If, if by March or by, by August, this guy, whoever shows up, the devil said, what did you say? Fine. Whoever shows up. And he will just go and drag one funny guy. And just because the guy is in church and he wore a tie and, and talking with belt, does not mean that he's serious. And before you know it, through indiscipline. Are we together now? Through indiscipline, you now say, yes. I will marry you. Your father will say, I'm, I'm sensing that you are in danger. I said, Daddy, don't worry about me, please. Age is not on my side. And you marry and you find out that the same thing that happened to your elder sister has now happened. It was not the spirit. The spirit was casted. 
you pay the price to get a correct mindset. The information for your deliverance has been given. But the discipline of conformity was not there. Shout, I will wait. One of the hardest things for believers to do is to wait until the hand of God comes to assist you. This is not just in the issue of marriage. In the issue of job, God says, stay, I will direct you. The next thing you just hear that, okay, there's something somewhere. And you say, Kai, I don't, I'm ashamed. The last time I went for a wedding, I saw all my classmates. They were all in cars. And me, they were even asking, what are you doing? Pastor, you are still like this. And the next thing you jump. When, when the devil wants to destroy some people, he will make sure you get visa to US. Whereas your, the will of God for you is in Nigeria. And you smile your way to US out of the program of God. It takes discipline. It would never have been my desire to be in Zaria by this time. No. Oh God, you are my love. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. out the spirits and then you renew your mind by the power of God's word and then you obtain grace the grace that supplies the staying power many are the devices in a man's heart he said but the counsel of the Lord that alone shall stand there is a way that cement right unto a man it takes discipline to stay God, do not let us go from here. We, we, we know what Egypt. Uh -uh. Do not let us go from here. If your presence will not go with us, we are not going. And I'm sure they remain there. And God said, these guys are serious. So. Please be careful. We have, we have lost respect for the discipline of waiting till God speaks. Gone are the days where people can beat their chest and say, I know God spoke. Today now people over intellectualize everything and we keep crashing and making nonsense out of our destiny. You must cry for grace. Lord, if I would die here, let me die waiting for you. Ah. And God said, you are doing this for me. You can put your ego on the line for me. I will arise for you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you oh, We wait on you We wait on you Shabakata lakato shabarata We wait on you sensitive now I prayed for a very strong angelic manifestation tonight 
and the Lord told me that once I got to this topic, just this experiencing complete deliverance, there will be very mighty angelic activities. John chapter 19, please let's hurry up. From verse 28 to 32. Or to 30, let's stop at 30. Experiencing complete deliverance. This is good news. That means it is possible that a man, Jesus himself, how many of you know that his words are powerful? Jesus said, no matter what happens, there is a potential in the kingdom that a man can be completely free. He that the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. Apostle, this is good news. You mean after 100 years of captivity in my family, there is a way out. That there is a way out that I can say it is finished. Finally, the chain of barrenness. Finally, the chain of poverty. Finally, that people don't rise in this family. That there is a curse and a yoke. That a time can come in a believer's life where like Jesus you say it is finished. Complete deliverance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The cross can go. Yes, sir. The barrenness can go. The failure, the retrogression. I saw my father go down. I saw my mother go down. So there is a way out in Christ. Jesus, the son of the living God, said it is finished. He opened a new and a living way. A pathway that a man can obtain complete deliverance. Not up today and down tomorrow. Hallelujah. Be sensitive. Sit down. We are not, we are not praying yet. That's why we kept the oil here. Because the oil too is here in the sermon. I want to show you a mystery. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It is this revelation that makes deliverance a mystery. From part one to three to four. This is where we are coming to now. Listen and pay attention. And let me tell you. I want to show you how I was delivered. Get ready for my... I want to show you what worked for me. I am a testament of this. I would never be where I am today. Until God himself revealed this. By his spirit. And I want to show you. Complete deliverance. Complete deliverance. I, truly I came with my heart open. I cried to God and I said, Lord, this, this thing has to go. Everybody shout it is finished. Shout it again it is finished. This is Jesus speaking. Not angel Michael. It is finished. So he gave me access that it is possible. Oh look how healing this is. But you mean did you know? Look. Some of you here as I'm talking now. You are just thinking of the mess in your background. That you have been crying and say, Lord, it's just more deliverance I need. Hold on. Some of you here have counseled you. You come from backgrounds where your parents were priests directly. Not that they went to priests. Directly. There are territories here that were dedicated to all kinds of devilish idols. It is finished. I found this years ago. I told you about demons oppressing me. This simple scripture you see. When God shined it in my spirit. I was reading a book really. That's where it came from. But I said Lord I, I, I don't know. But this is what I'm seeing. And then God broke this thing down. That I'm about to show you. Sit down. Sit down. Let's learn. We're going to pray. Experiencing complete deliverance. The first thing I want to talk about quickly and then I will show you the three ways is I want to teach you the legal system of the kingdom very quickly. The realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Please listen carefully. The, the realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 2. 
mighty God. 26 and verse 2. Read with me. As a bird by wandering and as the swallow by flying. Uh -huh. So the curse, causeless, underline causeless, shall not come. Meaning, if there is no cause for it, it should not have come. If you ever saw any limitation in your life, there is a system of authorization. Because there is a law in the spirit that when a thing does not have a reason to come, it does not come. So the barrenness, the failure, everything has a reason. A curse, causeless, cannot come. If it ever came, something authorized it. There is the legal system of the kingdom. Redemption, as we know, was done on legal grounds. Jesus did not just come. The Bible says the soul that sinned, it shall die. It's a law. God himself had to submit to that law. Are we together? It says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So the son of God did not just become a man and came to the world. No. The Bible says by one man, sin entered. So it could not take a spirit to save men. It had to be a man. Jesus had to be a man. I want you to see the legalities that the son of God went through. Are we together? Jesus had to be 30 years to start his ministry. Because in Jewish custom, if you were less than 30, you were not considered a man. So it wasn't about his spiritual life. He had to wait and go through it until he was 30. Jesus could just fall from the sky. Like Elijah, that people say, Elijah the Tishbite. But Jesus had to grow in a woman's womb. And was born and cried and could die and grew. From a young baby to a young child, teenager, adult and all of that. He passed through it. There is a legal system in the kingdom. Let me show you something. Isaiah 41, verse 20 and 21. The verse of emphasis is 21. Isaiah 41. That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this and the Holy One of Israel has created it. Read 21 for me. One, two, read. Aha. Uh -huh. This looks to me like a lawyer's language. This is the Lord speaking. Produce your cause. Bring the legal terms. Bring before me. So Abel said, I will produce my cause. And the blood went to heaven. And said, God, have you not said whoever destroys man, whoever kills by the, lives by the sword, shall die by the sword? I did not live by the sword, and now somebody has slain me. My blood was cried, and God came and said, Came. Your brother's blood is crying. And he said, am I my brother's keeper? I said, don't talk that nonsense. Blood is crying. The legal system of the kingdom. God, as kind as he is, is teaching us how to make him bless us. And he said, when you pray, ask me to give you this day our daily bread. Otherwise, you will never eat it. This is God. Son of man. Say to these dry bones, I'm waiting for you. If you don't say it, it may never happen. I, the dry bones did not move at the word of God. It moved at the word of God through the mouth of a man. He says, say to this dry bone. The dry bone, ah, you are now talking. No. Bring forth your strong, how many reasons? Bring forth your strong reasons. Why you think you should be the first graduate in your family? Bring forth your strong reasons as to why you think that you should not fail in life. Look at me. You saw people went to school and the devil taught them like a lion. Bring forth your strong reason. Why you are the last born in your family and you believe that like Joseph, you are the one who will feed them. Bring forth your strong reason. I've, when I saw this years ago, I said, my God, bring forth your strong reason. Don't just sit down and think it will happen. There is the legal system of the kingdom. The legal system of the kingdom. The legal system of the kingdom. 
So let me teach you three steps now. Number one. You want to experience complete deliverance. Your first assignment is to break the legal hold of Satan. And all the demonic powers over your life. Or your family. Or your church. Or your destiny. Whatever it is. The first assignment is to break the legal hold of Satan. Break the legal hold. A curse causeless shall not stand. Barrenness causeless shall not come. Failure causeless shall not come. Delay causeless shall not come. If it is there, something is authorizing it. Your first assignment is to break the legal ground. This is where ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to the powerful mystery of the blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, my precious blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the eternal saving blood. Listen, when you are about to face the gates of darkness as a final onslaught, there is no other weapon that you can carry. The first weapon for true victory is the mystery of the blood. The blood. The blood. The blood. Five scriptures very quickly. Matthew 26 verse 27 to 28. Matthew 26. Matthew 26, 27 to 28. And he took the cup and gave thanks. And he gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament. The blood is done, is what? Is shed for many. Why? For the remission. Remission. So a system has been initiated in the spirit. Remission. The word remission means to blot out. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. Ephesians 1 verse 7. Then we we'll look at Colossians 1 14. Read with me please. 1, 2, read. In whom we have redemption. How? So how does redemption happen? Please talk to me. Redemption. Redemption. Through the blood. The forgiveness of sins. It didn't say the forgiveness of your sins. It doesn't matter whether it's your sins. Our fathers have sinned. There is a system. I used to think he said forgiveness of your sin. No. There is a mystery of atonement. Notice for those of you who cast out demons. Sometimes you see those. They just shout and talk. I won't go. No, 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 no. The blood for the forgive whatever ill to see means to miss the mark whatever happened around my life whatever happened around my lineage that authorized darkness there is a system of atonement according to the riches of his grace 1 verse 14 Colossians Colossians 1 verse 14 once again in whom we have redemption through his blood even the what I hope you know there is a law in the spirit that when you see the travail in the soul of your offender your heart will be appeased look at this come Sheol if Sheol steals my handkerchief and they catch him my satisfaction is in his punishment is that true as they punish him I now feel appeased. If they don't punish him, I feel bad. So the Bible says he shall see the travail of his soul. Who is the he? Not Jesus. Man in Christ. Because it was at the point of exchange. We offended the father. And according to this law, there is a requisite level of punishment that must appease the heart of the offender. 
And Jesus said, instead of you and your father, let me stand in for you. So while they beat him and blood came out, the father watched, took his face away. And then the Bible tells us that he was seeing the travail. That means the yoke and the ordinances that they did. Remember, they murdered missionaries in your village. And ordinarily, until these things happen and they kill everybody based on that. Because their blood cries. But then, God in heaven will see those who offended. The grandfathers that made the cause to come upon the family in Christ. The travail. And the father says, that's enough. I set you free. It is finished. Redemption through his blood. Even. So there is a kind of redemption called the forgiveness of sins. That your wrongs, your sins. If sins are forgiven, then the consequences they bring are also forgiven. And the authorizations they give is also forgiven. Are we together? Revelation chapter 5. Just follow me closely. Jesus grant us grace tonight. We have to be fast. Revelations 5, 9 and 10. Quickly please. Revelations 5, 9 and 10. And they sung a new song. Saying, Thou art worthy to take the book. And open the seals thereof. Uh -huh. For thou was slain. And has redeemed us. Unto God. How? By your blood. Out of every kindred and every tongue and every and every these are the four realms where causes exist. Look at this. Please go back to verse 9. Out of every kindred, every tongue, every people, every nation, everything was covered. We were redeemed by his blood. I hope you know that God ensured that Satan participated in the death of Jesus. That was the only way that the blood of Jesus could hunt him. When Cain killed Abel, who did Abel's blood hunt? So whoever killed Jesus is the person who the blood of Jesus should hunt. Had they known this, they would not have crucified who are the day? Satan alongside the principalities and powers. Satan, God made sure in his wisdom that they all participated in the death of the son of the living God. And then verse 10, he says, he has made us a kingdom of priests unto our God that we reign on earth. The last scripture, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10 to 11. Popular scripture. Hmm. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now is come salvation and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the, not the heathen, the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Next verse. And they, he had been cast down. But to appropriate the benefit of what has happened, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They overcame him. They overcame him. They overcame him. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Listen, listen. The moment the mercy of God steps in, I've told you this. The moment the mercy of God steps in over an issue, my brother, my sister, listen to me. You know that card they call end of discussion. It truly is end of discussion in the spirit. The moment the blood factor comes in, notice that when the blood was put on the lintel of the people, it had nothing to do with their personal belief in God's deliverance. The moment the angel of death saw blood, even if it was Pharaoh, if Pharaoh's son entered one of those rooms where there was blood, he wouldn't have died. Even if he was cursing God from the room. The same stiff-necked people that cursed God later on were in that room. 
but because there was a covering of the blood so every time we engage the blood many believers don't know how to engage the blood to engage the blood is not just to shout i plead the blood i plead the blood i plead the blood alone are we together it looks like it's drizzling or rain or so please if it is just let the people find a way of stationing them around we're, we're about to pray so we'll find a way of making it happen are we together now everybody say the blood so the first mystery that brings deliverance is the blood. When I had this revelation, I began to pray. And let me tell you, that was when I found the mystery of Psalm 51. They gave you that scripture. Psalm 51 was something that I forgot about that scripture many years. It was this year that God reminded me again. Psalm 51. Please give it to us. Our time is gone. Let's see how we can do justice have mercy upon me oh god according to thy loving kindness according to the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgression too let's just run it wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin three for i acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me four against thee thee only have i sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Listen, let me tell you. You can carry your family and in covenant. Stand as you make. This is not just about one man. It can be one business. It can be one family. It can be one church. Many believers will not believe this. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest. And be clear when, when thou judgest. Verse 5. You can read it down, down, down. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. And you read this scripture and cry the mercy of God. Listen to me. Nineveh was a land that was so depraved. When God sent Jonah, Jonah said, God, I'm not going. He said, I know you. I know you. I want to allow this thing to remain so that you will be angry and curse these people. I know that if I talk to them, you are merciful. They will now repent and you will act as if they didn't do anything that warranted punishment. And he ran away. He ran away for a justifiable reason. There was something about God that he knew. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. The Bible says he is slow to anger. So if my father or my mother went to sacrifice a baby and drain the blood to send me to school and now there is a spirit that stands on legal ground, I can stand before God and knock on the door of mercy and say, Lord, I know that the soul that sins, it shall die. But do men die twice? Is it not appointed one for man to die? And after that, the judgment. And Lord, your son has died. And what judgment? No one condemns you if you are in Christ. And you stand on that legal ground. And God says, done. Done. It may have been 30 years, but done. Lord, I went to a herbalist myself because I was looking for a wife or husband. Lord, I went by myself. I wanted to pass exams. I went to Zaria City. I went and did this and that. Lord, I know that I did all of this. And you stand before him. And then the blood speaks. Every time the father sees the blood, Satan sees judgment. Every time you point the blood, to plead the blood does not mean to coerce it like a charm. To plead the blood means to bring to remembrance. It's not just saying, I plead the blood. To plead the blood is a revelation. Bring to the Father's remembrance the substitutionary work of Christ. And that the blood, the sinless blood of his eternal son that was given in exchange for my deliverance. Mm. That's the first thing I did. And that's the first thing anyone must do. If all you keep doing is in the name of Jesus, I'm free, you're in trouble. Pleading the blood entails a broken and a contrite heart. You see, let me tell you, there is a level of repentance that brings the hand of God to a man. It's not this arrogant, I plead the blood, Lord, just get up and break 250 years yoke of killing people in my, in my village in the name of Jesus. After all, you died. No. A broken, there is an attitude. 
that makes the blood effectual. Are we together? The fact that the Bible says we should come boldly does not mean it says we should come arrogantly. Lord, I stand before you and I know that on my own I will never be able to make it. I watch my mother cheat people. I watch my father cheat people. I watch my siblings cheat people. Somebody lost a job because of his wickedness. It is true that as a family we deserve this. But Lord, I stand on behalf of my family. If my people, which are called by my name, although they are called by my name, it is not automatic. They must humble themselves and pray. And seek my face and turn from their evil ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. And I said, Lord, it's a deal. And I cried. I will never forget that night. Lord, let your grace and your mercy speak for me. My grandfather served you until he died. Even on his deathbed, he died for Jesus. In your anger, remember mercy. Lord, if you leave me the way I am, I will never make it in life. Lord, can the dead praise you? Let me show you how people touch the heart of God. Lord, if you take my life now and you allow witchcraft kill me, like it killed everybody in my family, can the dead praise you? Lord, if I give birth to children out of witchcraft, you are presenting your strong reasons. Lord, is it not you that has said you are a merciful God? I stand before you without argument. And God arises from heaven. Many believers do not know how to touch the mercy of God. It was the psalmist that would write everything he did on behalf of Israel. And say they should make a poem out of it. Let us with a glad soul mind praise the Lord. He said for his mercy is endure. He's ever faithful. He's ever sure. He will even say Sila. Think about it. I didn't go to God with a bold face as a man of God. To say, God, let me tell you something. My grandfather was a pastor. I love you. I, I, I don't drink beer. I stand before you in my self-righteousness. Is that pride that kill people. Someone must go down on his knees. And say, Lord, a cause causeless shall not stand. There is a reason why we are failing in this family. There is a reason why doors are not opening in this family. And Lord, I stand before you. Who else will I run to, oh God? Will you let men? See, be like the saints of old. They knew how to talk to God. Lord, will the living, will the dead praise you? If you pay me, if you do this, do you want them to say you brought people out of Egypt but could not take them to the promised land? And the Bible will say God repented. Have you heard that he said, come, let us reason together. That tonight someone can say, God, will the unrighteous and the righteous receive the same reward? What then is the value of your blood? And you would think you are joking and God is listening to you. Lord, is it a crime that I came from the north? Must I fail the failure? Is it a crime that I'm an evil man? Must I fail that failure? Is it a crime? I came from a Muslim background. Now I'm born again. It is true that I went to all kinds of Alpha and the rest. But Lord, will I receive the recompense of sinners? Bring before him your strong reason. And cry for his mercy. I did that. You appropriate the mercy of God in your life. Number two, in complete deliverance, you cannot downplay the power of words. Write it down. The power of words. Your words are a vital tool in establishing the victory of Christ over your life and situation. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 37. Please, let's hurry up. I already sense fire burning in this place. We'll do this thing very fast. And will pray. Mm. Matthew chapter 12. Verse 37. Jesus said unto him. Matthew 20. Chap chapter 12. 12 verse 37. Matthew 12 verse 37. 
For by thy words thou shalt be justified. I will tell you what words. It's not any words. And by thy words thou shalt be condemned. You know what the words are? Let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Let those who have become benefactors of his blood make that announcement in the realm of the spirit that Satan you heard my conversation with the king of glory and it is unto him I have sinned and he has decided to show me mercy therefore I decree and declare that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I declare that I'm free from all of these chains the Bible says declare ye it looks simple we make declarations without appropriating the blood and the mercy of God. When it has to do with deliverance, the blood opens the door. And then your words, you sound that word to principalities and powers. Words. There's a reason why there was an echo. It is finished. Jesus didn't have to say it. He said it for a reason. And the curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom. There is a new and living way that we can step in. I remember the Lord asking me to speak and say, Son, begin to speak and denounce yourself from every walk of darkness. And I began to pray. I've obtained mercy. I blot myself out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I obtained forgiveness. I've been called out of every tongue. I thought it was a joke until my life began to change in a remarkable way words are powerful for with the heart you believe and if you believe the blood speaks for you then with the mouth confession will be made you don't keep quiet the redeemed of the lord speak the righteousness that is of faith speaks and then number three complete deliverance The ministry of the anointing. Yes sir. Yes sir. The anointing. Luke chapter 4. 17 to 21. Let's look at how Jesus announced. His deliverance ministry. The messianic prophecy. And there was delivered to him. The book of prophet Isaiah's. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. 18. Please, let's hurry up. The spirit of the Lord. He's about to deliver now. And he's showing us. So before anything, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he had helped me. Anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to preach the, the to heal the broken hearted. He had anointed me to preach deliverance to the captives. He has anointed me to recover sight to the blind. He had anointed me to set at liberty them that are bruised. 19. He had anointed me to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. 20. We are reading to 21. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. 21. And he began to say unto them this day. When? Talk to me. This day. Say this day. That means from today. Don't be surprised when you see people free. It's what he was telling them. He said, I just read it. Meaning if you see demons flying, it's because an anointing is upon me. And today that ministry starts. This is what Jesus was telling them. He opened the book and showed them. He said, I'm showing you from the book. So you are not surprised when you see a woman bound for 18 years. All of a sudden free. This day, I have come as a fulfillment of that scripture. Today, somebody's this day. Because the book has been opened. It is this day. The day the book is opened, that's your this day. The spirit of the Lord. Because he had anointed me. Anointed me. Isaiah 10, 27. Isaiah 10, 27. This day. This day. This day. 
and it shall come to pass when notice that everything happens in a day it shall come to pass in that day what day the day your faith chooses that day the bible says if you if you hear his voice this day there remained a rest for the people of god that his burden shall be taken away somebody will come and carry it away that means it never will belong to you again notice two things that will be taken a burden and a yoke and the bible says and his yoke from off thy neck it says, and the yoke mashana katoska barakatosh the yoke shall be destroyed not because you are tired of it because of the anointing there is an exact anointing that breaks yoke it didn't say because of an anointing there is a particular anointing now let me tell you this not every anointed man can deliver you this is what i want you to get there is the anointing an exact kind of anointing just because a man of god prayed for you i'm telling you this believe me there is an anointing specifically ordained by god the same way there is an anointing that prospers the same way there is an anointing that heals there is a dimension of the anointing that is allocated for detonating yokes. Like a bomb that is supposed to scatter somebody that was put by a wicked man somewhere and you come and do something to it and then it becomes like toy, like a piece of paper. How do you know you are delivered? Strange results. Instant results instant open doors let me tell you deliverance is one of the things that happen instantly my life changed like day and night if i did ministry without this encounter i would have been in for a rude shock i found it that there was a burden on my neck there was a yoke a burden on my shoulder and a yoke from my neck i remember going to my village and passing around and seeing well-meaning people poor people i saw how hard working my father was very honest man one of the most honest people i know in my life yet doors refused to open this man will rise up like this and crash as if God does not exist. They were the ones who trained us in the way of the Lord. I never saw my father carry one bottle of alcohol. Not once. My mother served God. She was so innocent. She didn't know anything about witchcraft. It was Nigerian film that made my mother know that there was something like witchcraft. She was that innocent. Yet nothing changed. But when I engage the blood and I made decrease and this anointing fell from heaven. Are we together now? You see why I said they should keep these bottles here? It's not just because of a ritual. Let me tell you. Except God did not send me. When this oil touches your head, many of you will step into instant visions. Instant visions. Listen. You will you will see things all of a sudden you will start seeing things that had happened before and god will tell you this is where it started the same way you go to bed hold it for me remember while you were doing your prayers some of you kept seeing yourself you were seeing where your problem started from secondary school going back seeing a lot of things look at the attack that happened some of you all through while you prayed you never saw anything good night after night because satan is a master of the flesh realm i told you to just continue and don't mind him the yoke shall be destroyed i remember that anointing oil when i bought it that night i left it open in the presence of god i played benihin worship from night 
from from morning till night soaking everything through my rechargeable and when i did that thing i was shaking like a leaf i knew there was like a physical mist in my room and all of a sudden i carried that oil when that oil touched my head that was it i didn't even know where i was again alone in that room i woke up many hours with strange visions from that encounter the revelations of ministry i started writing like a madman all of a sudden doors see let me tell you do you know that everything that you have prayed for was answered but hijacked by the time this door is open is an avalanche things would look let me tell you the truth i'm not joking you will see people within a short time a lady that nobody has a business of saying i want to marry you the bible says that how many people will come to you i know it was speaking about men but all of a sudden a brother that was ordained to be your husband but this wicked spirit will blind and make sure that they don't see you by the time this yoke is taken that brother goes to bed this night and god says what are you waiting for your wife has been before you for 10 years the helper of your destiny standing and watching you like this but there had been a decree never help him and you find out you will bring a friend two of you will come to plead for assistance they will help the friend and leave you there are some of you here with the kind of anointing god gave you you should never be small but you are even wondering why i never call for people to come and they come something drives them it was bishop Oyedeko who was saying when living faith church started as anointed as he was and he is their heavens were closed and they were fasting and praying and the spirit of the lord told him come out and he came out and he looked and according to him he said he saw something that looked like a dark a thick layer of dark cloud and the lord told him this is the blindfolding layer that the devil put in the eyes of people to misrepresent what you are doing and then he told him to command it and he declared that a light shines in darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it and he said that the, the thing just folded like that and he produced a poster with testimonies and wrote come and see that was it living faith took another dimension till tomorrow when i caught this revelation that was when i saw that publicity was spiritual at the point i said it people thought it was a joke i don't mean to brag i'm not saying posters are wrong you go around this city you are not going to find one poster but we will shift a meeting just by a simple announcement shift it and people will come you try that and tell people shift it, and people say ah that's it i found a reason there is an anointing when the yoke breaker comes and sits and his weight rests upon your life i'm telling you anything that is not him must give way are you ready to pray now rise up on your feet
is my night. I declare that everything that Jesus Christ did for me on the cross, it must be appropriated in my life tonight. Therefore, I declare that every yoke, every spell, every cause, every ordinance speaking against me and against my loved ones tonight I command that you are leaving me open your mouth and pray and plead the blood the ordinances of the fathers Jesus, I stand on behalf of myself and my family and I declare that everything that the devil has taken away from us, we command that it must return tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Everything. Come on, believers, pray. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. You spirit. You spirit. Behind the tragedies in my life. Say every spirit. Behind the failures in my life. Behind the delay in my life. Behind every retrogression. Behind every closed door. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Tonight. Your legal hold is broken by the blood of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. The spirit behind the circles of failure. The spirit behind the circles of defeat. Aladasabarakatos. 
Alleluia. 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 Now listen to me. Please let me plead with you. I know that you can see that it's past nine. Please. I know today's service may take a few minutes, but I'm pleading with you for the sake of your destiny. Just be patient with me and let's address this thing this night. Are we together? Please don't let the devil. Many of you will find out right now that you are having the urge to just go. It's a spirit. It's because the spirits are about to be challenged. You may come with someone now as I'm talking. He wants to ease himself. He wants to cough. It's a lie. It's a spirit. I'm about to challenge something now. Hallelujah. Now, listen. This is what will happen. I'm going to pray on this oil. Please listen to the instruction, everyone. Those online, just get a bottle of oil so that while I'm praying, you can connect. If you are with your family members, get a bottle of oil. Even if they are sleeping, just touch their head. Please make sure everybody is touched by this oil. Are we together? If you have faith and you think you will not be embarrassed, you can even, the little oil that is in your hand, you can just place it on your stomach. Ladies, prophetically, you are touching your children on board to say, no devil, no devil. John was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Are we together? Praise the Lord. By the time, by the time this oil, we are going to be fast. Now, because of the way it is, um, we are going to station, I believe, are there tables around outside? Or if there are not tables, at least there are, there, are, there are people who will stand. Now, this is what you will do. Please, we are going to coordinate. It's going to be very fast. There might be people falling under the anointing. We'll just help them. Please manage, help the usher so we don't injure anybody. Now, what I want you to do for me, please, just obey instructions. By the time we bless this oil, just a little of it, touch it on your head. If you have a little one, you can touch it on their head and then go back to your seat and start blasting in tongues till you are done. Don't pray anything in understanding. Are we together? Just go back to your seat under the anointing or not. Just find somewhere and pray in the spirit. And by the time I'm done, I'm going to lead us into some serious spiritual prayers and speak over our lives. And then you will go to bed and let's watch the God of heaven surprise you. Are we together? Please, anything that can spoil, carry it out of the way. Please, let's be fast. Father, in the name of Jesus, you anointed me. And Lord, it is time for your people to rise. This is ordinary oil. But in the name that is above all names, the Lord is asking me to put my hands in all the oils. In the name of Jesus Christ, I put my hands prophetically upon every one of this oil. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, let it be an extension of the grace that comes with this office. In the name of Jesus Christ, I place my hand upon this oil. Father, we have had many anointing services in this place. But in the name that is above all names, I command this anointing oil to carry the yoke-breaking anointing. Let it carry the anointing for strange and total deliverance. Whoever must die as a result of this prayer, as this oil comes upon your head, except God did not send me, a sword of judgment will search for them and bring them to the grave. If there is any physical agent that has held your destiny, and said for as long as I'm alive you will not move people of God I stand before you and I tell you by the message of the grace that I've received 
God will not only take away that destiny, their life will pay for it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please cover them strategically. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord, as they come under the influence of this oil, I decree and declare that let the fire from heaven not only fall upon their life, but turn every situation that must be changed around. In the name of Jesus, for those online, I pray for the various oils you are carrying. In the name of Jesus, as you anoint yourself and your loved ones, let the embargo of darkness, no matter how long it has been, let it break now and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please, let's have people, let's have them come quickly, quickly. You can start coming. Um, just coordinate them. I, I honestly don't know how we're going to do it, but we'll have to find a way. Yes, you can find a way of, even if it's for you to come and we can start from here and then you come and go or do whatever it is. Please, very, very quickly. Make sure you are praying in the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, listen. Listen. I want you to pair yourselves into two very quickly. Just find someone. Find a neighbor somewhere. In the next, our time is gone, but in the next three minutes, all I want you to do holding the hands of that person is to just blast in the spirit. Just pray in the spirit. Go ahead and pray. Just go ahead and pray. Shabata Kataba Rabatoka Shalaba Jesus in the name of Jesus lay your hands on your head fire is burning in this place say in the name of Jesus I declare in this season may the glory of the Lord that is upon my head begin to speak now open your mouth and pray Oh Lord are a shield you are my glory you are the lifter the lifter a man's head can be lifted shekete kato para kato shabarato kasada bekata I declare the glory of the Lord upon my head be lifted Pray. 
he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder say in the name of Jesus every chain holding my life tying my destiny say it again every chain holding my life tying my destiny by the power of the Holy Ghost be broken now lift your voice and pray every chain every chain Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree I speak to the forces of creation hear my voice align yourself and cause the word of God to walk in my life lift your voice and pray we speak to the elements of creation and the stars fought for the water and the stars fought for the water and the sun and the moon fought for Joshua and the earth fought for the woman we command the elements of creation align yourself hallelujah Say in the name of Jesus. All earth, you are the seat of abundance. Say it again. All earth, you are the seat of abundance. It is out of you that trees grow. Therefore, I declare, according to the law of seed time and harvest, let my harvest locate me now. Lift your voice and pray. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards me. He said I am the Lord thy God that teacheth thee to profit and leadeth thee in the way that you should go just do what I'm asking you to do stretch your hands in the name of Jesus I declare that these hands that are stretched towards me right now become the hands of fire in the name of Jesus hallelujah please put your hand on your belly just put that hand there just do what I'm asking you to do put your hands there the Bible says for out of your belly shall flow rivers say in the name of Jesus every treasure within me as I lay my hands I declare come out now lift your voice and pray every treasure Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to round up 
don't mind all the prophetic acts you are doing I want you to just trust my leadership in helping you get results are we together are we together I like you to stand where you are and say in the name of Jesus I prophesy to the north say it I prophesy to the north I prophesy to the south I prophesy to the east I prophesy to the west everywhere my help has been ordained to come from in the name of Jesus I call you locate me now lift your voice and pray it comes from God but it passes through men send help oh God send help oh God send help oh God hallelujah 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 praise the Lord just place your hand again on your head now you are finished praying let me pray now any spirit that comes with ancestry any spirit hear my voice you are a product of ancestry sent and programmed for the from the fathers to oppress the people of God right now by fire I declare by fire I declare by fire release their glory now I declare by fire Shobakatos Katarikato Embre Teka Sopakatadiakata Every legal ground I break it now in the name of Jesus Christ the spirits of delay that sit upon people's destinies so they don't move forward right now in the name of Jesus may the power of the Holy Ghost through this oil you have made contact with command those devils to live now the spirits of barrenness not just biological barrenness that makes that nothing works in your life you study you go and write exams you fail you get money you do business you fail you get a job they fire you in the name of jesus i command by the power of the holy spirit may that devil live your life now and forever ladies i'm praying for you now there is a spirit that draws only married men or wicked ungodly men to certain sisters they don't know why no responsible person comes to you right now in the name of jesus if there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is in this category i command that devil come out of them now come out of them now come out of them now any spirit husband any spirit wife any demonic entity manipulating you in the night coming to oppress you in the name of Jesus I declare now be released in the name of Jesus be released in the name of Jesus be released in the name of Jesus there's anyone here I say it again you always have dreams seeing yourself in your former house seeing yourself in your secondary school see yourself repeating something you have already done 
Empre que taskata baraka toshia. Ke proto soso peke diakata. Right now I shift you. Speed to your life. I cause the spirit of delay. Speed to your life. I cause the spirit of delay. Speed to your life. I'm praying for people here. Every year, or every two, two years, or every three, three years, the same pattern repeats in your family. Either someone dies, or someone loses their job, or something happens. Right now, the yoke that creates patterns, I stand in the name of Jesus, and I break it from your life. I break it from your life. By the blood of Jesus, I break it from your life. The moment something good is about to enter your hand, you go to bed and you have a dream. Something strange happens and you lose that thing. It must find a way of leaving you. I pray for you now. In the name of Jesus, everything that makes sure that you see things but never handle them, I cast that spirit from your life now. I cast that spirit from your life now. I cast that spirit from your life now. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you now. Whatever pattern you saw in your parents, and you are seeing it now in your life. It could be poverty. It could be hardship. It could be failure. Jesus declared that it is finished. By the blood of the eternal covenant. He declared that it is finished. Therefore I stand right now. I separate you. From any pattern. In your life that is tied to your lineage. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray for students. The moment you enter the exam hall, something happens to you that you cannot explain. I pray for you. May the fire of the Spirit separate you from failure forever. Separate you from failure forever. Separate you from failure forever. with me you will thank me for this prayer I'm praying this is what I did for myself we're rounding up listen there are people here it's not delay that you face but what can be done in two weeks? It will take you almost one year. So it's like you are crawling to achieve things in life. Right now in the name of Jesus. The spirit responsible for that wickedness. I command it to live your life now. Hallelujah. There are people here. You have never had one month in good health. It's a pattern you saw. You can treat malaria non-stop for three years. You can treat headache non-stop for four years. You can treat all kinds of infirmity. That one is no longer sickness. Pay attention, I'm praying for you. It's a pattern. You saw your father live on drugs forever. Your mother live on drugs forever. Now it's happening to you. Right now in the name of Jesus. May the power of God set you free from that pattern now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray. Please, just be patient with me. There are many other things we would not do. Once I'm done, my conscience, I won't be able to sleep tonight. 
if I don't finish what I'm doing to you. Now, whether you believe in the prayer, put, put down your hands. Whether you believe in the prayer I'm about to pray or not, just be patient with me. Are we together? This is an intense deliverance session. Just pay attention. As you grow in the spirit, I pray that one day you will understand. There's no time to explain everything to you. But I want you to just listen to me and watch what the Holy Spirit does. There are three that bear witness in the earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. These are the same three elements of covenants. The spirit, the water, and the blood. I'm praying now. If there is anyone connected by witchcraft, spirit entities, dedicated to your life, and you were attached with them, knowingly or unknowingly, he is called the father of spirits therefore I decree and declare every spirit connected to you lose them right now and let them go lose them right now and let them go I'm still praying for you. Listen to my prayer. The water is a very strange mystery. Every water on earth is older than every man. It's the same water the saints drank that we still drink. There is no water that comes from anywhere. It's a cycle that repeats itself. And the Bible says this thing you see is a witness. Is a witness. Therefore I declare. In the name of Jesus. There are spirits that operate in this domain. And let me tell you something. Truth be told. This is only false. When it is relative to the power of God. The strongest operation in the demonic kingdom. Are marine spirits. Listen to me very carefully. Many ignorant people have no idea of what I am saying. 80%. Eight out of every ten people are tied by this mystery of the spirits that operate in water. When the spirits that were casted out of the man in Gadara left, they were they drove the swine right into water. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Just lift your hands and be silent and let me pray. Especially for those of you that live around river Rhine areas. After today, don't worry, you can believe anything you want to believe. But right now I stand. Shakoto Sataka. Rekete Kato Shabariata. I declare every marine power holding down anyone's destiny in the name that is above all names. In this night of deliverance, by the fire of the Holy Spirit, let them go now. Any dedications that have to do with marine powers, I release you from it now. 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 strong spirits they can tie a man's life tie a man's destiny forever they can keep a woman barren for eternity are we together we're rounding up If there is anyone here who has been dedicated to any idol, you know that you saw things happen in your family. They brought one man or woman of God somewhere or one herbalist and tied your destiny to objects, made incisions in your body. 
gave you things to eat and drink in the name of protection I command that covenant and I declare that it is null and void in the name of Jesus it is null and void in the name of Jesus it is null and void in the name of Jesus drop your hands brothers please lift your hand when a man does not find his destiny early when a man does not get established early he said it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth there are many men I, I need to pray for you you don't know the mystery behind your life moving but you are not moving you love God but nothing works you are celebrating birthday after birthday birthday after birthday you are 40 years still in your father's house every time you want to move out of your parents house something happens and ties you down there are even people who are married but are forced to still live with their parents the bible says, therefore shall a man leave his father and leave his mother this is a very serious prayer i'm declaring right now every gentleman here the powers that held your father down that he could not do much in his lifetime that has helped people within your locality territorially geographically in the name of jesus every gentleman here i release you go and prosper i release you go and prosper i release you go and prosper And in case your father or your mother or anybody cursed you and they are now dead I stand here by this office in the name of Jesus I reverse that curse over your life now maybe as a result of your past you did something for your loved ones and in anger they made a pronouncement don't say it doesn't matter I stand in the name of Jesus by the ministry of God's mercy and grace I speak over your life for every cause that has been pronounced upon your life I release the blessing of the Lord 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 I want to speak over everyone's finances here in the name that is above all names see let me tell you this if you lack financial resources your life will never move forward no matter how well meaning you are it takes financial resources to do ministry to do business to take care of these are little children here you see there are many things it takes finances to take care of your parents it takes finances to get a blessing from them you will need to do something they will not just bless you like that he said make me venison that my heart will rejoice that i will speak a blessing over you i decree and declare whatever has closed the doors and don't think just because you are getting a salary or you are getting something you will not receive the prayer expand your capacity i pray for you whatever has closed the door of financial resources to make sure you perpetually beg I cast that spirit from your life forever. I cast that spirit from your life forever. Let me pray the last prayer. You love God, but every time you are at a height spiritually, something just happens to you in a way you don't know. It may be a dream it may be something and the next thing you open your bible you don't even know where to read again you just close it you go to pray and you stand in jesus name two minutes you are not sleepy and you are not busy but once you can sit down on your phone and before you know it three hours has gone but you get up to pray i will pray later on eight o'clock i will pray it's a spirit attacking your destiny because you only prosper as your soul prospers therefore fire upon your altar receive it now <laughs>
Fire upon your altar, receive it now. Fire upon your altar, receive it now. Fire upon your altar, receive it now. I'm praying. There are spirits that manipulate your vision and manipulate your dreams. It's supposed to be an avenue that God will show you things. But of late you found out that everything you have seen and told people got you in trouble is a sign that something has been hijacked. There is a gift. There is an anointing right now. I purify the workings of the spirit in your life. Papa, do shake it, take it up. Let the spirit of error live your spiritual experience now. Receive grace to see correctly. Receive grace to hear accurately. Finally, every family that is represented here, whether they are born again or not, the fact that you are here standing, representing them, in the name of Jesus, tonight, we pronounce judgment. Hear me? Upon every man, woman, altar, and every yoke programmed against your family, they perish tonight. Every shrine, every harpalist, every priest, they perish tonight. Father, we give you the praise. Declare in one minute, I am free. Wave your hands and give Jesus thanks. It's finished. Finally. Finally. I can arise again. Listen. When I did what I just led you to, I remember I went that night and I slept. And I began to see strange things. My destiny just opened up from page to page. New levels of the anointing came. New levels of fire. Let me tell you. I want you to sit tight. And watch the excellency of light over darkness in the days that follow. This deliverance session will make you respect God in a way you have never done. Believe me when I tell you this. You watch out for the testimonies. You will see open. I'm not talking of testimonies. Tea came, bread came. Testimonies that in one day, the rewards of one year can come to a man. Because the yoke has been broken. Jesus, we give you the praise. And Father, we declare tonight, your people have paid the price to stay this late. To see to it that the doors of their destiny is open. Father, I stretch my hands as your priest. And I seal this deliverance session in the name of Jesus. Hear me. What you have been delivered from now. You will never be delivered from it again. The door that has been opened for you now. You will never pray for this door to be opened again. The chain that has been broken over your life, you will never have to pray for that chain to be broken again. The grace to enjoy the full benefit experientially of the victory of Christ in your life, I release that grace now. In the name of Jesus. Please give Jesus a hand clap. Amen.
Amen. Hallelujah. Please keep standing. Our time is gone. This is your first time worshiping with us here at Koinonia. Hold on, please. If this is your first time, I know that our time is gone. Thank you so much for your cooperation. I don't want to end this service without acknowledging you. What a time in his presence. Wherever you are, aside from those at Overflow 3, please, I'd like you to make your way right inside here. Just stand before me and let me speak a blessing over your life. God bless you. Let's honor them as they come out. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, is this how you honor people? Hallelujah. By the way, let me challenge you. I like you when you go back tonight, no matter how late, receive grace from God to seal your prayer with prophetic pronouncements. I started over you, but you can take, even if it's 10 minutes or 15 minutes, just seal this prayer with prophetic announcements and call into your life everything you want to see. God bless you. Please let them all come. Let's appreciate them as they come. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I, I love and appreciate and honor every single one of you. This is Koinonia, a meeting put together by Eternity Network International. And I'm honored to have you around. Thank you for the sacrifice of coming around to round off our deliverance series with us. It's been a special series on deliverance. And we're trusting God for a great time. We want to pray for you. I want you to stretch your hands over them, saints of God. Not you. The people of God are praying for you. Let's stretch our hands towards them and bless them. Koinonia, bless them from your heart. You are anointed. We decree and declare over your life. Every challenge that stands before you, even as we have prayed. It will surprise you the way things will change and turn around. I declare that every anointing and every grace that must step into your life in this season, I declare that that anointing comes upon you in the name of Jesus. For those of you in ministry, fresh anointing, you step into a new dimension of results in the name of Jesus. For those of you who came because you are trusting God for one thing or the other, I release the grace of God upon you and I command you to prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Now, I know that it's raining outside. I don't know if there is no place to manage them. We can just find a system. Just follow this lady waving her hands. The lady waving her hands very quickly. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We believe you are mightily blessed. To connect with the ministry and get more from Apostle Joshua Selvan, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Koinonia Vienna to stream sermons.org For questions and inquiries, call 0814-721-4444 or 0814-721-4444